in the night, brother men and sister ladies. Sorry about the echo. I got the, the hallway door open because it is scorching hot in this office right now. How's everybody doing tonight? I know there's probably going to be a good bit of people still at uh, Shoops Grove, but for those of you coming in tonight, really appreciate you. We were there yesterday for the, the first opening day. They call it the Early Bird Special, and uh, we got some awesome bottles some of them we're gonna we're going to uh auction tonight and then some of them we're keeping hey what's up long island digger how's it going brother man we probably got i don't know about 15 minutes guys if you want to talk about anything ask any questions Corey will be here he's at his uncle's uh birthday party so he'll be here a little later on but he will be here and he's bringing the uh hamilton croc that a lot of people has been after Hey, Gail, what's up, brother man? But yeah, lots of fun yesterday. We got to meet Digger Dave and uh, Paul Beeler. Hey, John, what's up, man? We met uh, Steve Sabrowski. We met Drew Zimbala. Uh, we met Tim Collins or Jim Collins. We met um, Daniel Crager. All kinds of people was up there yesterday, guys. It was a lot of fun. Hey, Nikki, Jeff, Josh, what's up? How's it going, guys? Whole lot of fun, whole lot of fun. Yeah, I know, Christina. He always has excuses at the last minute why he can't be here on time, so. I don't know, guys. You know how it is. I'm here, though. I'm here for you. Got some great, great bottles to go out tonight, too. Charles, what's up, brother man? So I'm going to do a little show and tell. Um, probably my favorite find that you guys are going to see tomorrow. John Chaney, what's up, brother? My favorite find you guys are going to see in tomorrow's video is this Geisen's uh, Union Mustard. Really, really awesome. 1860s, 1870s. Has an eagle embossed on it for anybody that hasn't seen this yet. Check that out. Sweet, sweet bottle from New York. Tattoo Steve, what's up, brother? Look at the Benicia on that thing, guys. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> you want to see something else that's badass? You know how we always have trouble showing the, the uh, colors on the darker bottles? So check out what we got today. We have this... Uh, Max Force LED light, and check this out, guys, when we turn this bad boy on. So how about that? So now we got a uh, more powerful light to show the darker colors on these bottles. <laughs> oh my gosh, that... That mustard, John Cheney, brother, I'm never gonna tumble that bottle. Look at the in, look at the imperfections in this, guys. There's like a, I don't know if somebody touched that when it was still hot or what. It just kind of melted in on itself. Just an absolutely incredible wonky bottle. It goes every which way. Yeah, I'll never tumble this bottle. Georgia Ware, how's it going? All right, guys, so for my second thing for show and tell tonight, check this out. This is a pharmacy that a lot of people have never, ever seen before, including myself until we dug it. This is a Red Lion Pharmacy, and you uh, check it out, Cumberland, Maryland. Cumberland, Maryland, guys, isn't that wild? But it's got a, uh, a big lion embossed on it, holding his paw up on like a shield with a sword. We actually got three of these, all different sizes, out of that privy. Very rare druggist bottle, local to uh, me and Corey. Red Lion Pharmacy. Anybody ever seen that one before? Check that out. Yeah. And the uh, base of it, the base of this one doesn't say anything. Just a smooth base. Probably 1880s, 1890s. My wife did not get me a haircut, guys. I ended up going to this place called the Sports Cave up in LaVale, and uh, this girl named Brittany gave me a haircut, and she did a great job. 
Great job. Another nice rare local bottle that came out. You're going to see in tomorrow's video, guys. If that wasn't enough, check this out. This is a W.P. Campbell's Pharmacy, also out of Cumberland, Maryland. Very, very cool. It's got a flat slug plate, and then the rest of the bottle, you can see, is kind of rounded off. Also, another very rare druggist pharmacist bottle from Cumberland. And this one actually has a patent date, guys, if you can see on the base of it. I don't know if you can or not. But it's got a patent date of, I believe, 1878 is the patent date on this one. So real nice early 1880s druggist out of Cumberland, Maryland. Yeah, we, we hit it. We did really, really good. I was hoping Corey was going to be here to uh, show and tell some more stuff. And I walked off and left my um, croc at the house after taking pictures for tomorrow's video because I was going to show that. But, yeah, that's my show and tell tonight, guys. Anybody have any crazy stories or anything awesome they got at uh, Shoops Grove or any other bottle shows or flea markets or anything like that? Sorry, I'm extremely thirsty, so and it's hot, so I'm going to be drinking. I also have my uh, energy drink, my amino energy, because I'm tired today. I drove um, eight hours yesterday, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Holly, appreciate that. Appreciate that. That was, uh, that was a stunning crop. Yeah, the show is really awesome, Steve. Now, yesterday, there was a lot of vendors that hadn't set up yet. There was a lot of tables still covered up. The big, big show is today, but we got to have our big, big show today, so we went yesterday. Now, they're having another one in July that I hear is outstanding, and uh, we are going to be there the whole weekend for that, guys. So anybody that missed it or wants to still uh, meet up with us, Shoops Grove, sometime mid-July, I believe. Yeah, July. I heard it's crazy awesome, so we'll be back up there again. Citron CFJ mason jar last night. Heck yeah, Dustin. That's awesome, brother. That's one of my favorite colors in glass is the Citron. Adam, what's up, brother? Twin Diggers, how's it going, everybody? I don't have my packaging crew with me tonight, so I'm going to be labeling everything myself, at least for the first part of the uh, auction. Tonight, Adam, well, we're starting off with Dr. Pepper, of course. And then I've also got some amino energy. It's got some BCAs and some good stuff to hopefully wake me up a little bit. <laughs> You're out of here, Susan, already? Not even going to stay for the auction, huh? <laughs> right, we still got, yeah, everybody ditched me, Steve. Uh, my daughter Nautica has her boyfriend over. He's visiting. And I, I don't know where Savannah's at, but they'll be over here tomorrow to do their wrapping part of things. Nikki found two pair of antique sheep shears and a bailing hook. Dang, that's awesome. Heck yeah. Iced tea. Pickle juice. Oh, man. Alan, I have heard it's good for you, but I just can't stand it, brother. Ugh, no thank you on that. <laughs> I'll pass on the pickle juice, guys. It's going to be a crazy auction tonight. We have uh, some really good stuff we picked up from Sheep's Grove yesterday. We uh, put out a good bit to bring back some really nice quality bottles for you guys tonight. So hopefully you enjoy yourself. Yeah, I used to drink that, uh, that vinegar with the mother in it. I used to, to force myself to drink it a lot, try to get my six pack, but oh my gosh, man, not no more. That's <laughs> so nasty. So nasty. No, can't do it. Can't do it, guys. All 
I don't have too many hangovers, Arnie. I'm not I'm not a big heavy drinker. Now, my army days, I was a big heavy drinker. But now, no, I don't drink too much. Jerry Bloom, what's up, brother, man? I'm fantastic. Other than feeling like it's a million degrees in the office right now, I feel great. I feel wonderful. I got some great stuff for you guys tonight. Is that right? Dr. Pepper was originally a hangover cure. Tony's cigar is a uh, six pack is in the fridge. <laughs> yeah. Soak ribs in vinegar before you grill them. I mean, yeah, I'll eat them like that. I just, I just don't like vinegar, vinegar straight up. I think we got maybe 10 more minutes, guys. I don't have anybody here to ask what time it is. So about 10 more minutes, we'll get started. Anybody have any questions for me or anything they want to talk about or discuss real quick before we get started? Corey says he's on his way, guys. He's on his way. <laughs> hey, Bluegrass, how's it going? Jonathan Turner, what's up, brother? Tammy, 659. All right, all right. All right, guys, just a couple more minutes in. A couple more minutes. If we run over seven a little bit, that's okay. Yeah, Arnie, your bottle's on day number three, brother. Day number three of the tumble. And uh, it wasn't as bad as the Coca-Cola, so it should only take about five to six days, and it should be ready to rock and roll. It's going to be looking sweet, sweet. The Coca-Cola for Deborah came out phenomenal. I will uh, post a picture tomorrow on the Facebook page for anybody that's interested in that kind of stuff. Josh, I seen that Coke sign you just picked up, brother. That's amazing. Really, really cool. But yeah, Arnie, you're on day three, brother. Day three. Any other questions, guys, before we get started? We got fresh batteries in the timer. We got everything hooked up. The TV's looking good. I even changed it to vivid quality, so I don't know. It looks great. It looks great on the TV. <laughs> so what's everybody uh, hoping to get tonight? Out of, out of all the pictures that I've shown so far, what is, uh, what's the favorite? What's the verdict here? Lots and lots of good stuff on the table. Oh, Nikki, they're rare here too. They're, they're hard to get and they're seasonal. So you only get them, you know, for a short amount of time. You got to get out there and get them while they're up. A suitcase full of old cheesecake matchbook covers dang snarky that sounds awesome brother that sounds awesome jonathan's dump is still flooded for five months oh man got some really nice poisons and inks tonight i've got a sweet sweet midget mason jar holly the blue soda is a i believe it's a john ryan let me go grab it and i'll show it to you real quick Oh, no, the blue soda is a Sights. It's a Sights Brothers, and I actually picked it up at uh, Shoops Grove yesterday, guys. I've actually got quite a few historicals, and so does Corey. But check this out. Pony Blob, Sights Brothers, out of Easton, PA. Big S on the back. If I had to guess, I'd say it's been lightly tumbled. But uh, they did a really good job on it. You can see all the striations and stretch marks still in it. Other than caseware, this is a beautiful bottle. There's the base of it. This will be coming out later on. But yeah, really nice, almost sapphire. Sights Brothers, guys. From Easton. So that's going to be coming up later on tonight. As well as historicals. Gail, I'm not going to sell the, sell the Red Lion, though. That's a local to us and a very rare one, so that's going to go in my 
personal collection. I do have some pharmacies coming tonight, but but not those. Uh... David, I don't think I've ever dug a Smile Soda. Is that, that sounds like an Art Deco, 1930s, 1940s maybe. Hey, you're welcome, Peter. Any pro anytime, anytime. All right, guys. Well, without further ado, I'm going to flip you guys around, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So let's do this. Everybody have a great night. Um, remember, no politics. Keep it PG. There's a lot of children that, uh, that watch us. And happy bidding, guys. Let's get it. So you can see the clock's real nice and bright today, this evening. I'm going to go ahead and put two minutes on the clock, and let's get our lag time in, guys. Here we go. Go ahead and send your lags in. Lag Jonathan Turner. Lag Christina Lacey. Lag Peter Emery. Lag Jeff Jolliffe. Lag Old Throw. Lag Arnie. Lag Jeff Ballman. Lag Charles White, Lag Gail Copinger, Lag Holly Lavin, Lag Bobby J, Lag Tammy Kuchta, Lag Sherry Potter, Lag Valerie Jean, Lag Tattoo Steve, Lag Nikki Steele, Lag Long Island, Lag Ruth Cigar. Lag Swamp Fox, Lag Creative Mayhem, Lag Adam Matthews, Lag David Jones. Yeah, I seen that, Mama Cigar in the house, Tony brother. Tag teaming tonight, huh? That's what I like to see, guys. That's what I like to see. That's what they do on those uh, like storage wars and stuff a good bit. Lag check, Jonathan Turner. Thirty-five seconds left. Lag rise up. Make sure you send your information. Rise up if you'd like to bid. Lag Josh Dondorf. Lag Luke Collins. Anybody that needs to know how to register, check the description, please, in tonight's auction, and it will let you know exactly what you need to do to register. Without that information, I will not accept bids. Right now, I'm looking at eight seconds lag, guys, so it's looking like it's going to be a great night tonight. I'm going to let the rest of my lag run out, and we're going to go ahead and get rolling. All right. While I get my, uh, my first set up, if you already sent me your information, what's your name? What's your name, Rise Up? I, do, I don't recall remembering you I don't know how long it's been or uh, if you've never bid before so maybe I didn't save it but yeah if you would just go ahead and resend your information real quick while I'm getting my first lineup set up Mike Mike McLaughlin yeah Mike if you would brother just go ahead and resend it real quick I'll give you a couple minutes before we get started, brother. I apologize. All right, guys, we're going to start off with a few bottles that you're going to see in tomorrow's video. We dug probably around 50 bottles out of that uh, stone liner. 
that you're going to see tomorrow. So I'm going to run some of those. We've got some really neat ones coming up. First up on the auction tonight, we've got an earlier Dr. D. Farney and Son out of Hagerstown, Maryland. This one's got really nice uh, patina, rainbow patina on it. it. Says teething syrup for babes. Nice early 1880s version, smooth base. Little tiny circle there. No damage, light aqua in color. That's going to be our first bottle of the night. Dr. Farney and Son, Hagerstown, Maryland. This is an earlier one than what we dig out of Double Diamond Ridge. 1880s on this one. We're going to go with a $5 start. $5 start on the 1880s, Dr. Farney's. I would imagine that the main ingredient for uh, teething syrup was heroin or morphine. I mean, morphine, probably some kind of numbing agent and alcohol, morphine and alcohol. We got a five with Gale and the clock is running, guys. No damage on this, by the way. Yeah, morphine. That's right, John. Killed a lot of infants, unfortunately. Really, really sad time, and they didn't know what was happening while they were dying. And here all along, it was the teething syrup doing it. Mrs. Winslow's was the most famous one, but they all pretty much contained the same lethal dose of morphine and alcohol. Still a very cool bottle, very cool piece of uh, kind of local history to us out of Hagerstown. Need $6 or higher on the 1880s Dr. Farney's. Jerry, I do, but normally during these warmer months. All right, Mike, I got your information, brother. You're good. Norm normally during these warmer months, we try to hit privies. We try to hit privies as much as we can because that's our, our preference. That's where we get our older bottles, the higher quality stuff, even though it's not as much stuff. And then we save the dumps for the colder seasons and the rainy seasons when we can't get privies as much. 50 seconds on the clock. We got Tony Cigar at six. We need $7 or higher, guys. $7 or higher on the Dr. D. Farney out of Hagerstown, Maryland. Hey, thank you, Mike. Brother man, appreciate you. eighteen eighties med light aqua in color eighteen eighties blown in mold dr farney's teething syrup for babes fifteen seconds charles white's at seven thank you brother you need eight dollars or higher eight or higher Five, four, three, two, one, zero. We got Jonathan Turner on the snipe at $11. Jonathan Turner at $11. Nice pickup on that, brother, man. All right, let me find, got to get my post-its here. Actually, I'll just catch up when Corey gets here. Let's make me a little, little line over here. Okay, next bottle we're going to pull up out of the box. Also, Doug, in tomorrow's video, you're going to see it. Check this out, guys. we got a sweet little... Real nice patina it out. Mexican Mustang liniment from the Lion Manufacturing Company out of New York. Nice early blown in mold. Smooth base. Around 1880s again. 
Uh, Matthew, that was Corey's pick, and he has not decided to sell that one yet, brother. He's going to hold on to that when he really, really likes it. That's our first Wheeling, Virginia, anything ever. So for right now, it's going to stay in the personal collection. Check it out, guys. Mexican Mustang Liniment. Lion Manufacturing Company out of New York. Light aqua in color. It's got a lot of, uh, what do you call it, like iridescent kind of look to it. Hey, appreciate that, Matthew. That was, uh, that was a very exciting dig, and, and Corey was able to do it live. So it, it's one of those things that don't happen very often when you try to do something live most of the time. It don't work out, but it just happened to that time. So very fortunate. That was a great dig for us. We're going to go with a $12 start on the Mexican Mustang liniment. What happened, John? The kitchen window was full of cobalts. Oh, man. That sounds incredible, brother. Christina's at 15 right now. The clock is running. Here we go. I'm not sure. I haven't seen Mustang Dave yet, Alan, and I really didn't think about that either. Hopefully he uh, makes it in the room. Oh, man, Jerry, I'm sorry to hear that, brother. Dang it. I hate when that kind of stuff happens. Eighteen eighties Mexican Mustang liniment out of New York from the Lion Manufacturing Company. Light aqua in color. Real nice uh, patina on this one. Needs 16 or higher. 16 or higher. Yeah, Jerry, that is a bummer, man. Matthew, we don't have a video on our full personal collection. We have photos in our Facebook page. If you go through there, we have thousands and thousands of photos of bottles in our personal collection. But we've never actually made a full video of it. Dang, Jerry, I've not gone this whole year. I'd be in some kind of a comatosis state, brother. 30 seconds on the Mexican Mustang Liniment, Lion Manufacturing Company out of New York, 1880s. Just dug, and then you'll see it in tomorrow's video, guys. This one came, I guess it was about 12 feet down, is the layer this one came out of. Big, big, hard packed lime layer. It was two and a half feet of lime. Big, huge blocks of it. We're on lag now. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Christina Lacey, you got that at 18. Christina Lacey at 18 on the Mexican liniment. Nice pickup on that sister lady. All right, check this one out, guys. This is an early Piso's Cure right here. Piso's Cure for consumption from the Hazeltine and Company. And a really nice light aqua. It's got a three on the base of it. He had nice early blown in mold, 1880s, early 1890s. Piso's Cure for consumption, light, light aqua. No damage. Also, just recently dug. You'll see it in tomorrow's video. The aqua one is the hardest one to get um, of the three colors. 
and this is a little earlier than what we normally dig, so let's go with a $10 start. $10 start on the 1880s Pisos Cure. Gail Copinger says 10. Thank you, brother man. And the clock is rolling. Need $11 or higher. Arnie's at 15. Thank you, brother man. We need 16 or higher. Eighteen eighties Pisos Cure Hazel Teen and Company for consumption. It says <laughs> this was uh, one of the first forms of marijuana. Consumption tuberculosis. So that's what this was for tuberculosis. Wow. I did not know that. Thanks for that information, Alan and John. Very awesome. So this was the Pisos cure for, for tuberculosis, guys. Very nice find. Yeah, it cleaned up real nice. Most of the bottles out of that privy cleaned up superb. It was really dry. There was no moisture down there. Um, the walls had moisture on them, though. It was, it was kind of strange. The walls were not real nice intact. Nothing got real loose on us. And the privy was dry. It was, just, it was just an amazing time down there. Good time. 30 seconds on the clock. Gail Copinger's at 18. We need 19 or higher on the 1880s Pisos Cure for tuberculosis. Hazel Teen and Company. Arnie's at 20. Thank you, brother. We need 21 or higher. 10 seconds left. Doc Holiday Special. Yeah, it is, Christina. We're on lag time now. Get your bids in, guys. <laughs> Three, two, one. Zero! Arnie at 25? No, Arnie at 20. Arnie got that at $20. Dude, that's a nice pickup, brother. Nice pickup. Liz, your 20 was out by a little over a second. Arnie got that one at 20. Very nice pickup. I don't remember that episode because I didn't watch that too much, but that's pretty much exactly what they did is they, uh, they were con artists and they pulled up in their wagons and tried to convince everybody that what they were selling was the best thing in the world and they needed to spend their hard-earned money on it. <laughs> that's how they did it. Check this out, guys. This is an early, early sauce bottle in a mint green. Look at the color on this thing. Real nice, uh... Ground lip, 1870 sauce bottle. Check that out. Also going to be in tomorrow's video. We dug some really, really nice stuff yesterday or uh, the other day. But check that out, guys. It does have one, one small little blemish right there. You can barely even feel it just right there. Just a teeny, tiny little flea bite. Other than that, no damage in a mint green color i believe it was some kind of a uh olive oil or, or sauce bottle get you a measurement on this one 1870 sauce bottle in a mint green stands eight inches tall eight inches tall how about a 12 dollar start 12 dollar start on the 1870 sauce in mint green. Let's see if the glow show will show it any better. Aunt B hammered. <laughs> That's great. Twelve dollar start, guys, on the eighteen seventy sauce bottle. 
You will see this in tomorrow's video. Nobody on the sauce bottle? Let's drop it down to $8. $8 start on the mint green sauce bottle. We're gonna drop it down to eight dollars for you. 1870s mint green sauce. We got berry curl at eight. This would make a uh, absolutely killer flower vase, especially in the color that it is when the sunlight hits it and the beautiful roses or carnations or whatever you want to put in it. Yeah, Christina, we need $9 or higher. $9 or higher. Minute and 40 on the clock. This is a real nice sauce. Early, early, too. Ground lip. You don't see them ground lip very often. Could have held cherries. Yeah, it definitely could have, Long Island. It's a really good guess. It's an unusual shape, too. Very thin glass as well, guys. Very thin glass. I'll show you the uh, ground lip one more time. Very unique sauce bottle here. Just under a minute left. Need $9 or higher. On the 1870s mint green sauce bottle. We got Gunner at nine. Thank you, brother man. Need $10 or higher. $10 or higher, 25 seconds on the clock. 1870s mint green sauce bottle or cherry bottle. Could be a cherry bottle, some kind of a condiment bottle for sure. 10 seconds, guys. We are on lag now. Berry curls at 10, need 11 or higher. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Berry curl, you got that at $10. Nice pickup, sister lady. It's a beautiful little uh, vase condiment container. Next up, we've got a really nice early Dr. D. James Expectorant out of Philadelphia. Real nice patina on this one. Also dug in the stone liner. Kind of like a recessed base there. Nice early. Double collar. 1880s. Dr. D. James Expectorant. No damage. Light aqua in color. Patina all over it. Really nice bottle here. Eighteen eighties Dr. D. Jane's Expectorant out of Philadelphia Light Aqua. No damage. We're gonna go with a twelve dollar start. Twelve dollar start on the Dr. Jane's. Another bottle that you will see in tomorrow's video. Gail Copinger's at 12. Thank you, brother man. Here we go, guys. 13 or higher. Clock is running. On the Dr. D. Jane's Expectorant out of Philadelphia. Let 
Need 13 or higher. Minute and 30 on the clock. Light aqua in color. Double collar. 1880s Dr. D. Jane's Expectorant out of Philadelphia. Will be in tomorrow's video. Need 13 or higher. Coming up on one minute. No damage on this one either. Got real nice patina on it. A little bit of hazy on the inside, but no damage. 40 seconds on the clock, $13 or higher. Twenty five seconds left. Hey, hey, appreciate that, Dale. Yeah, this is a nice one. This was actually the very first bottle that came out of that stone liner. This one came about eight feet deep. About eight feet deep this one came. Maybe seven. Something like that. We're on lag time now, guys. Need 13 or higher in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Gail Copinger, you got that at 12 bucks. Heck of a pickup on that, brother man. Yeah, that's a nice one for you. Yeah, great pickup on that. Real nice. All right. Let's see what else we got down in here. I'm going to run five more uh, Doug bottles, guys, and then we're going to jump into the heavier hitters. But check this out. Here's another really nice Doug bottle that you're going to see in tomorrow's video. This is a Dr. Wistar's Balsam of Wild Cherry out of Philadelphia. Nice paneled med. And it says IB right there. IB. Nice early one, kind of the blob top form. It's got a... have no idea what it's got on the base of it. Something two or something six. You can see the real nice patina. Real light, light aqua color and cleaned up immaculate. No damage on this. Those are uh, actually creases in the glass. Those are not cracks at all. Just really cool um, imperfections in the glass. So we got an IB Dr. Wistar's Balsam of Wild Cherry out of Philadelphia. Check that out, guys. Another 1880s med. No damage. Let's go. Let's go with an $18 start on this one, guys. $18 start on the Dr. Wistars. What's up, brother, man? What's up? Corey is here in the house. Little shim, dude, real quick. Yeah. We got Tattoo Steve gonna start us off at 18. Thank you, brother. Clock is rolling. Here we go. 19 or higher on the Dr. Wistars Balsam of Wild Cherry. We'll be in tomorrow's video. You guys are in for a treat. I got, we got, between me and Corey, we got a lot of digging footage. A lot of live action down in the hole digging footage, too. I hope you enjoy it. Minute and 35. 
Is that the sample size, John? That's what it is, the sample size? It is pretty small. Let me measure this real quick. Five inches. Five inches tall on this one. Privy with stars. Yeah, that's what I've been selling the, the first 10 bottles of that dog. Style. Yeah. Appreciate that, Gail. Appreciate the support, guys. Minute and 10 seconds on the clock that's on the IB. Style. Did you? Heck yeah. yeah. I be Dr. With Stars, Balsam of Wild Cherry, Philadelphia. Sample size, guys. This is a pretty hard to find one, John says. Get your bids in. We need 19 or higher. 50 seconds on the clock. Apparently that Paiso's cure right here, the ones that say for consumption. Mm -hmm. Apparently consumption means tuberculosis. So these are these are for tuberculosis cure. The older ones are. Okay. Yeah. How many have you ran? This is number six right here. Send your lag in again, Josh and Benita. I'm sorry, guys. Robert Hoover's at 19. We need 20 or higher and 10 seconds left on the clock. I brought mine too. Yours is smaller. Is it? Yep, sure is. Sure. Holly Lavin's at 22. Tattoo's at 24. Lag check, Josh. Lag check, Benita. It's actually In a little bit five, four, three, two, one, zero. Christina Lacey at 25. Christina Lacey on the snipe at 25. That's a nice pickup on that sister lady. You're going to be happy with that one. Wistar, Did you bring your croc Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what they was all asking about. The croc. I was showing them the uh, Red Lion and the Campbell's Druggist and the yeah. Mustard again for my show and tell. And my haircut. <laughs> my new haircut. Yeah. Let's see here what we got. You sold any them early farnies or did you get I them? sold one of the early farnies. I still have two more. I'm going to sell these as a set right here, guys. Check this out. These both came out of the Stone Line Privy. They're, they're uh, stoneware, pottery. And I believe one is a toothpaste container, and the smaller one is for toothpicks, I believe. I think they're both toothpaste. You think they're both toothpaste? Mm -hmm. Corey thinks they're both toothpaste, but check that out, guys. Tooth powder. Gonna sell both of them one money. Tooth powder or toothpaste? The lids or... probably wouldn't have been bar painted. Yeah, we didn't find any of the lids, unfortunately, but two stoneware little jugs, one money. We're gonna do bidder's choice on these guys. You start me out on this. Are we alone tonight? Yeah, yeah, no Packers tonight. No Packers. Green Bay package. Got the team in there. All right, stickers. Where are they at? In the other room in there. John says too big for toothpaste. Too big? Yeah. I think they are. I'm not sure. They're tiny. I've seen toothpaste that are bigger than that. Yeah, they're not real big. Let me measure them. Let me measure them. Three and a eighth inches on the bigger one and. Two and a quarter inches on the smaller one. Yeah, I've actually found toothpaste bigger than those. Well, not John said bigger. probably a meat product. That, yeah, there you go. That's possible. Aren't there, like a dried there, meat? Isn't there meat paste too? Meat paste? Yeah, there are meat paste like the Bovril's. All right, we got Charles White at 20. Need 21 or higher. 21 or higher. Or cheese. Cheese They could be Ironstone, uh, John, but they don't have any marks on them or anything. Oh, yeah, they're Ironstone. Are they Ironstone? Uh -huh. Okay. My fault, then. They are Ironstone. Pig's feet, snuff jar. Yeah, they're all great guesses. But guess what, them. guys? Pig's you can feet. use them for anything that your heart desires. Stars go for that with stars went for 25. Christina Lacey stole it from me. 21 or higher on the pair of 
cheese, pig's feet, snuff, whatever you want to be in there. Teeth, weed, you can put weed in there, yeah. Twin diggers at 25. <laughs> medicinal liniment, <laughs> yeah. A little bit of medicinal liniment. <laughs> I like some medicinal liniment. Need 26 or higher. 26 or higher, 45 seconds to go. And the two iron stone. Did these all sell? Little pot, yeah, all those sold already. Hey, Luke, what's up, brother, man? It's going great. 30 seconds left on the clock. Sit your, sit your list right here. I'm gonna put these up here. All right. Steve just won the internet feed. And I didn't even see what it was. Oh, I didn't even bring my ink we, to show and tell. I forgot. Your what? My ink. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> they were asking about that too. Charles White's at 27. We need 28 or higher, guys. 28 or higher. What this weird sauce thing go for? 10 bucks. Nice. Barry Curl stole that from me too. We're on lag now, guys. In five, four, three, two, one, zero. We got Twin Diggers, Minnesota on the snipe at $30. Nice pickup on that. Twin Diggers, Minnesota. All right, next up, guys, I've got this really nice light SCA shot glass, also out of the Stone Line Privy. You're going to see in tomorrow's video. It's got a weird, the base of it's pretty heavy, I guess, to keep it from falling over. Yeah, that came out when one of the crocs did, too. Yeah, this was, was down low. This was almost pawnal. It was inside a crock. Probably 1870s on this one. That was another shot glass we pulled. We pulled a few shot glasses out of that hole. Yeah, we did. But this one's really, really nice. It's got a nice lip on it in really good condition. Light SCA in color. No damage. I'm going to hit it with the black light real quick. Let's see uh, how much we get to glow. Oh yeah, check that out, guys. Holy crap. That's what I'm talking about. That's a uh, that's a shot glass right there. 1870s shot glass in really good condition. You're gonna see it in tomorrow's video as well. for sliding down the bar top to the customer. Yeah, that's right, Arnie. That's exactly what that was for, brother. Let's go with the $8 start, guys. $8 start on the 1870 shot glass. Straight from the Cumberland Tavern. Preston McDaniel says 10. He wants that thing. Clock is rolling. We need 11 or higher on the 1870 shot glass. Made for sliding down the bar. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, you've missed some good stuff, but you haven't missed any of the real heavies yet. Oh. David Jones is at 12. Thank you, brother. 13 or higher on the 1870 shot glass, guys. You're going to see in tomorrow's video. Preston McDaniels at 15. Thank you, brother. Minute 20 on the clock. Need 16 or higher, guys. 16 or higher. Minute 10 on the clock.
One minute left on the 1870 shot glass. 16 or higher. Really, really nice reaction. If you have a black light display, this will go in there phenomenal. It's like a million degrees in here, Corey. It is. It feels a lot. <laughs> I'm burning up. And that's not on it. No, I went and turned everything off. It was it on? Yeah, it was. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually cold at night. Though. I Once know it. Dark, it's gonna it'll it'll cool down, but maybe it yeah. might be done with that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> might be done getting cold. Twenty seconds on the eighteen seventy shot glass, guys. Sixteen dollars or higher. No damage on this. Cleaned up really nice. Probably been slid down the bar many times, many times. Skunk eyed and radioactive. Yeah, that sounds great. Oh, it's got a good bit of wear on the base. Yeah, it does. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Preston, you got that for $15, brother. Nice pickup on that. Yeah, it's got a tremendous amount of base wear. You guys can see that. It's been slid around a lot. Mm-hmm. Bunch of customers held that in their hand. Maybe some famous people, too. George Washington might have took a shot out of that. <laughs> that would have been 1700 <laughs> I don't know. George himself might have had his lip boogers on, I'd say. <laughs> What'd you do with my pen? Took my pen? I stole it, yeah. Scum eater. <laughs> Preston McDaniel got that one for fifteen dollars. I got two more, and then we're gonna go over to the big boys. I think Corey brought some some dig stuff too, guys. Have you? Yeah, about five. Nice. So I'm gonna sell these as a pair. I've got a really nice iron stone, little serving dish. It does have some chippage on the outside here. It is, does have a nice stamp, Royal Ironstone China, JHM. It's got that crackle pattern. So we're gonna put that in there. And we're also gonna throw in this real nice early mucilage bottle. It's got a three on the base of it. It's got bubbles all throughout it. Real nice long bubbles all connected together. So we're gonna throw that in with it there. We've got a little ironstone, 1880s ironstone, 1880s mucilage. Bitter's choice, bitter's choice on the plate in the mucilage. Hey, Steve, what's up, brother, man? Robert Hoover's is going to start us at eight. Thank you, brother. We need nine or higher. Nine dollars or higher on the Ironstone plate. And the nice uh, light aqua mucilage full of bubbles. This is number nine. I've got one more Doug bottle after this. And then we're going haywire. Lag Steve Dungan, thank you, brother. Luke, I, I posted up a uh, Dr. Farney's earlier. That's local. Um, I don't know if Corey's got any local stuff or not, brother. Mostly big, big hitters tonight. 
Big hitters tonight after this 10. 50 seconds on the clock. Need 11 or higher. Charles White's on top right now at $10. Need 11 or higher. Yeah, all kinds of bubbles on this one, Tattoo Steve. It's got a sweet little run of bubbles. $11 or higher on the combo. Is it a long lag tonight? We're only running eight seconds on our end, guys, so um, feel free to refresh your feed if it's too long for you. It should speed it up. Yep, we do have a tip of canoe going out tonight. It'll be our first one. Four, three, two, one, zero. Nobody else got in. That's Charles White at 10. Charles White at 10 on the combo. Nice, brother. I thought it was real hot outside when yeah, I went out there. Down. Now it's just still hot in here. All right, next up, we've got a little sample Dr. King's New Discovery from Chicago, Illinois. A little Chica Goyle bottle. H.E. Buckland and Company. Nice early blown in mold. 1880s, 1890s. Gonna put that in. We also have this sweet little uh, three piece mold ground top with a 831 on the base 831 on the base three-piece mold around 1880s 1890s we're gonna throw that in and do one combo guys one combo bitters choice dr king's new discovery and a sweet little three-piece ground screw top little medicine bottle Looney Tunes heavy hitters. Looney Tunes heavy hitters. <laughs> Shoops Grove heavy hitters. That's what they are, brother. Someone's dog has been chasing the cattle. I was wondering where you went real fast, Susan. You, you haven't missed any obscure open pawnal druggists. No, ma'am. You're good on that. They haven't. The big ones ain't come out yet, but they are. They're going to be coming. This is the last of my Doug stuff that I'm running tonight, and then I'm going to Shoops Grove bottles. H.E. Buckland and Company. Three-piece med and a Dr. King's New Discovery. We got Barry Curl starting us off at five. Clock is rolling. We need $6 or higher. Yeah, Chica Goyle bottle. Dr. King's new discovery. And a little three piece mold med ground screw top. Lag check Steve Dungan. Thank you, lag check Charles White. Need $6 or higher, guys. $6 or higher. No damage on either one of these bottles, by the way. They were both dug recently and will be in tomorrow's video. Minute and 10 seconds on the clock. Mm -hmm. Look at the one I cleaned up. It's actually got a big amber green streak running down the whole side of it. Dang. But it also has a big flash crack in it. Oh, I didn't see that. I didn't either until I cleaned it. <laughs> but it's beautiful. It's got that nasty amber streak. This thing has green in the lip. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice, man. Are you and Corey like celebrities at bottle shows? Tony, I felt like a celebrity yesterday, brother. I ain't gonna lie. I made it to about five tables 
and I had to talk to everybody that yeah, walked past me. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. But yeah, there is a ton of people that want to come up and dig with us and want us to go dig with them. So our name's definitely getting out there. It, it is a lot of fun. We're on lag time now, guys. Charles White's at seven. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Charles White at seven dollars. Nice pickup on that, brother man. All right, guys, that was what I'm going to run my Doug bottles tonight. When I come back, it's going to be some big ones. Yeah, Digger Dave, uh, I actually got to meet him yesterday, Mitchell. Digger Dave and uh, Paul Bueller, super nice people. Got to meet him in person yesterday. Got some selfies taken with them. You'll see him on tomorrow's video as well. I'll do a little feature on Sheep's Grove and how that went. A lot of fun. Really, really cool people. And uh, that was my 10, guys. So now I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Wellings. And I'll see you back after a short recess. Yeah. What's up, everyone? Um, I'm going to be... I'm gonna be running a little bit of everything here. Um, let's see. I'm gonna do some stuff that came out of the 15 footer. First, I'm gonna start with this little tiny Dr. King's. It says, Dr. King's New Discovery, H.E. Bucklin and Company, Chicago. This is an 1870s bottle. Um, has a wee little tiny bit of roughness, a little chip out of the lip right there. Y'all can see. Nice early Dr. King's though. A little like sample bottle. Um, let's start it out at $5. $5 start on the early Dr. King's new discovery probably late 1870s, little sample. This this thing's tiny. I think Trav just ran one. Did you just run one, Tra Trav? Yeah, I did. With that last yeah, one. Trav just ran one with a combo. Except for the difference between the two is this one right here has really big embossing. Which is strange. Usually they don't. Here, you can, you guys can see the difference in embossing here. I mean, the embossing is a lot different on them, and the color is a little different too. Five dollar start on the Dr. King's new discovery from Chicago. You're out catching fish and bidding on bottles at the same time. Who is? Eastern. Yeah. I guess. I'm Eastern's at five. Let's start the clock. Need six or more. The old 15 footer. It's got a little tiny rock in the bottom of it still. <laughs> guess I couldn't get it out. Charles is at six, needs seven. A lot of these bottles did clean up really good. Actually, a lot of them have this really cool opalescence on them. And uh, you don't really find bottles that look sick to the point where it looks good too often. Yeah, no doubt, Eastern. Same here. Eastern's at seven, need eight. Need eight or more on the Dr. King's new discovery, late 1870s.
Shoops Grove was a good time. Me and Trav had a blast. Met a lot of cool people. A lot of new, well, a lot of diggers that we haven't met. We actually got to meet in person. Um, I'd imagine there's going to be some really good collaboration videos coming in the future with different diggers. We actually met a guy that is fairly close to us that wants to dig with us, and we didn't even know. <laughs> we had no clue. And uh, he's actually a couple counties over, but only about an hour drive tops. And there's actually a town that we both dig and are both interested in digging that we could probably meet in the middle and kind of dig it out. <laughs> dig it clean out. Steve, my lag is nine seconds, I think. Nine or ten seconds right now. On lag time now. Four, three, two, one, zero. That was Eastern at seven. Seven dollars on the Dr. Kings. Oh, he's out fishing? Yeah. Nice. Winning bottles and fishing. All right, here's another one that came out of the 15-footer, guys. Um, unfortunately, it's got lip damage on the one side. It don't have lip damage on the cross hitch side, fortunately. But this is a poison, and it's an earlier one. This is actually probably one of the earliest ones I've ever seen in this form, in this uh, variant. But, um... It it just doesn't sit right. Check how crooked the base of that thing is. It's wicked. I mean, there's how it sits sideways, sitting sideways. But um, awesome looking bottle. And we got some super crude stuff out of this. Well, look at the lean on that bottle. I mean, it's incredible. Super, super wonky. Um, since it's got the lip damage, let's start it out at eight. That is, I don't know what that is. It, it, it might be just a chunk of mud and it might be a part of the contents that used to be there. Christina says 10, start the clock. When this came out on video, guys, I got pretty excited because we were pulling broken 1870 stuff out. And when you're into the 1870s and you pull something cobalt, <laughs> it's pretty exciting. Actually, I don't know if you guys saw in the, in the uh, pictures of last video, but I had crawled under my grandmother's house because they thought there was baby, there was uh, kittens under there. And I crawled under to look and somehow I ended up stumbling upon this mound of rocks that they had dug up out of the ground. I guess they put a sub pump in or they did something. And uh, here they threw up a cobalt umbrella ink and it had damage, unfortunately. The top was whacked off of it. Um, it almost made me cry. <laughs> I actually looked for the top of it while I was there for probably 25 minutes and couldn't find it. There was a couple other early shards under there, but most of the glass that I found was around turn of the century. But yeah, super old cobalt umbrella ink laying under there. But I kept it. I put it up in the shelf because that's something you don't find ever. <laughs> cobalt umbrellas. So if you guys aren't always interested in trying to go out and find, I know a lot of people want to try this and a lot of, a lot of people want to find these bottles and stuff. Robert's at 12 and 13. Um, and it is really hard to get into some of these deep pits where all the good stuff's at. But uh, crawl spaces, I'm telling you, crawl spaces also hold really quality bottles. Um, me and Trav found some epic broken stuff in crawl spaces as long as, as well as uh, Really nice full bottles on lag time. Four, three, two, 
one, zero. That was Robert Hoover at 12. Nice. You were just out, Eastern. Oh, yeah, super lopsided, Mark. I mean, it's crazy lopsided. Never really seen any. I've never seen a poison like it, really. I know some of the British ones can be super lopsided, but this one just takes the cake. All right. Next. Here's something a little different. Here's another one that came out of the privy. 15-footer. However, it does have some lip damage in the back. I don't know what it was with this privy, but there was a lot of bottles that almost looked like they took their teeth and pulled the cork out and ended up breaking off the cor the edges of the bottles or something. I'm not too sure, but this one has a 10 on the base. It is 1870s. Um, Turtle Ink, it says patent October 31st, 1865 there somewhere. 1865, there it is. Um... And it is a J and I E M embossed on the uh, panels. Um, this is gonna go as a combo with the syringe that also came out of the 15 foot privy. Little glass syringe, really cool. No damage on the syringe at all. Still has the original parts inside, except for the um rubber piece that would have went in between here obviously that's gone it rotted out we're gonna do the turtle ink and the glass syringe started out at twelve dollars twelve dollar start on the turtle and the glass syringe i'd say the syringe is somewhere around it came out low. It, it could even be Civil War era, that syringe. Eastern's at 12. Let's start the clock. Yeah, that, that syringe came out pretty pretty low. So I'd say there's a good chance that it's super old. Ruth's at 14. Need 15. Eastern's at 15. Need 16. Roberts at 20, need 21. That syringe is super cool. We normally, when me and Trav dig these syringes, we either dig, we actually usually only find them plungers and they're usually broke, snapped off. We thought they were uh, swizzle sticks when we first found one of them. <laughs> A lot of the times these syringes are crushed. They're super thin glass and they just don't survive. And I'd imagine it was probably a common practice to crush them and break them so that nobody else could use them and pass on any kind of illness to other people. On lag time, three, two, one, zero. That was Robert Hoover at 20. $20 on the combo. Nice, Robert. Really, really cool syringe. The ink's cool, too, but that syringe, you just don't find them. Um, all right. Trav let one of these go earlier. Um, mine's a hair taller than his, but I'm pretty sure they're, sp they're supposed to be the same size. Um, one of the early pop.
Piso secures from the Hazeltine company for consumption. What'd you say this was for? Tuberculosis. For tuberculosis. But yeah, this is an early one. I want to say probably early 80s, maybe late 70s. But one of the earlier ones, me and Trav actually dug a couple of these broken out of a Civil War era pit, Civil War 1870s, and they had drippy applied tops, and I've never seen one that early before. Unfortunately, they were broke. I think Trav still has the shards of them, though. But, um, started out at 10 $10 start on the medicinal marijuana cure. This stuff had cannabis in it. Yeah, Robert, igloos are awesome. Actually, me and Trav were digging a pit probably three years ago, local, and, um, it was, it was probably, the pit was probably 10 foot long. It was a crazy one. It was probably six foot deep, max, but it was so long, and, and, uh, we had to keep undercutting it because we were so close to the road that we just really couldn't do anything, and, uh, he had to leave. Trav had to leave for, what did you, I think bowling or softball. I think it was softball. Trav had to go to a softball game, and it was just wide open. So, and we couldn't, we couldn't leave it open because it was so close to the road. And I had to finish it on my own, and I dug and dug and dug and dug, and everything in this pit was broke. And then I got to the back wall, and a, and a uh, turtle ink fell out, and it ended up being a rare one. And uh, I can't remember what it was in Boston, like G something something i can't remember but i ended up getting decent money for that bottle that was a while back um arnie's at 10 let's start the clock clock is rolling but yeah that pit was probably the had the most criers i've ever seen in it we dug a uh, broken iron panel uh Roars wild cherry tonic out of it, um, a broken gallon pickle. I mean, but there was some nice stuff come out of that whole broke. What's up, Adam? No, Robert, that wasn't the David. That the, this one looked like the uh, it, it was sided on the bottom like the. J and I E M, but it, it the initials were different. It was like G and something else, G and R C or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, it was so I didn't notice it at first either. I, I, it came out and I thought it was just one of the J and I E M's, and I actually even just put it to the side and didn't even care about it. In the end, packed everything up, got home, and it wasn't until I got home and washed it that I realized it didn't say J and I E M. Oh no, there wasn't no time to wash it off. Ruth, I haven't seen any yellow jackets in the ground yet. Not yet. Me and Trav were actually out looking around for the last of the mushrooms because it's starting to get too hot here. They're starting to dry out and die, die off. No more morels. I'm pretty sure my uncle went out and he said that he didn't find a single one. So I think they're done. But, um,. No bees yet. Not that we've seen. I'm sure I'll get stung by them as soon as they get in the ground, so I'll let, I'll let you know. Uh, we've had a couple ticks on us. Not a ton. Four, three, two, one, zero. Nice snipe, Gail. Gail sniped that out at 20 bucks. But, uh, yeah, we've had some ticks on us. I've had one, I think. Trav came out with like 19 one day. <laughs> <laughs> they were little babies. They love Tick, or they love Trav. I don't know They're what it is. They don't like me too much. They don't like it when I get the torch out. No, they don't like the torch. <laughs> they try to run away. Yeah. Uh, cicadas, I haven't seen one yet, but uh, apparently they're they're out. There's just not many of them. They're here and there. But like, uh, from what I, well, from what I understand, the ground temperature's got like 62 or 63 degrees for them to come up. But uh, check this out. Here's one of them bottles I told you that's so sick. 
that it actually kind of looks cool. This thing is so hazed out that it's opalescent. Really, really cool looking. Um, this is one of the uh, Acme blacking. And it's from the Wolf Chemical Company out of Philadelphia. Wolf and Randolph. Wolf and Randolph Chemical Company out of Philadelphia. So this is an earlier one, I guess. Um, the emboss It's so opalized that you can barely see the embossing on it, but it's there. But really cool looking, no damage. Um, let's start this off at $8. $8 start on the Acme Blacking. Opalized. I brought some too. <laughs> oh, Mitchell, I can remember. I was probably in, I don't know, seventh or eighth grade last time they came. And yeah, I can remember that. Very, very loud. All right, we got the eight. Let's go ahead and run the clock. Clock is rolling. But uh, when I when I was in middle school when they came out last, I wasn't. I was a fisherman, but I was a I was mostly a bait fisherman. Now I know cicadas are still bait, but trout hit them on top water. So you can use flies to catch them. You can use a cicada mimic, and uh, which you really don't have to because a cicada will float. So I've never done it before. I've never got to fish the river when the cicadas come out. So I'm really excited to do that. Me and Trav think it's going to be pretty epic. We uh, live 10 minutes away from, well, eight minutes away from uh, a river that's on the top five trout streams on the East Coast list, so we're gonna have a blast. Oh yeah, we have people eating them and everything. I remember there was kids eating them at the bus stop. Steve, they actually, I have lupus and, and uh, I have had a lot of run-ins with ticks because you already know me and Trav's always in the woods, so. Um, Jeez, and ever since I was a little kid, I was always in the woods. So, yeah, I've had a lot of run-ins run -ins with ticks. Well, whenever I started getting sick, that's what they thought I had. They thought I had Lyme's disease. And uh, they thought I had it very severely. We're on lag. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. That was, I think that's Christina. Yep, Christina all alone at eight on the opalescent bottle. But, uh, yeah, after a while, they ended up finding out that I actually had lupus. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. There's times that I have just weird aches and pains and different things that happen that you know, I'll get on and just being curious, I'll be like, all right, I'm looking up Lyme's disease to see what it actually does to you. And it honestly sounds like that's what's going on, but uh, in reality, autoimmune diseases, Lyme's disease, they all kind of act the same, so it's really hard to tell. I'm not discrediting my doctors at all, but I don't know. Sometimes you just wonder. But here's a really cool one. This is a Larkin Soap Company out of Buffalo. Um, it's the snake. It's the one with the, the S that's actually like a snake. And you can see there, it's got like the little lines all through it, like a snake there. Really, really cool monogram on this one. This is an earlier one too. Definitely 1890s. Um, let's do a $12 start on the Larkin Soap, Soap Company. Um, I don't know if these were salts or not. 
probably some kind of toilet water. I don't know. Yes, yeah, swamp. We dug. This is dug. This is this actually came out of the pit right behind the 15 footer. We dug this pit a week prior to digging the 15 footer, and it the pit behind it was. 1880s to about turn. Nah, we didn't even dig a crown top out of it, did we? It was about 1880s, 1890s was the wood liner. Roberts at 16. Clock's rolling. Oh, yeah, definitely a hint of purple in it. Christina's at 18, he's 19. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait till they start coming out. I don't like the, I don't like the sound of them, but I would just take my anger out on them by feeding them to the trout. <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> no, definitely not easy. Huh? Definitely not easy. Autoimmune disease. I put, I, I handle it pretty well though. I do handle it pretty well. I guess because I'm still young, but I just stay in shape. I mean that's that's the main thing for me. As long as long as I can keep in shape, stay in the gym, you know what I mean. Uh, we're always active, and uh, my big thing is with my autoimmune disease, if I let myself get dehydrated, it sucks all the water out of my joints and it causes my joints to swell up, and uh, it's not very pleasant. There's actually been one time I let it go so far that I couldn't move, and I'll never do that again. <laughs> Very painful. On leg, four, three, two, one, zero. That was Christina Lacey at 18. 18 on the Larkin snake looking bottle. Next. All right, let's do our first open panel. Let's do our first open panel bottle, and it's a nice one too. Check this out. Some people actually say that these were like little ink bottles, but I call them utilities. Uh, it does have a little bit of damage right there to the uh, flared lip. Other than that, it's a beautiful bottle, super, super whittled, and it is a greenish teal. Check out the open panel on it. Really nice. Super, super crude and whittled. Very nice early looking glass. Well, it has that little lippy. Um, let's start it off at 20. $20 start on the green teal utility. Open panel. Nice color on this one too. Christina's at 20. Let's start the clock. Need 21 or more. See how wonky that thing is? <laughs> Nothing on it, but my goodness. Crude as can be. <laughs> I don't know. That's why I was like, whenever he's like, hey, you can come over. 
I'm like, mm. <laughs> Rebecca, you've missed a couple nice things. Right now we're on a teal green open panel, 18. This could be 1840s. It's got the flared lip. We say late 40s, early 50s. Flared lip utility. I'm going to call it teal. Got COPD when you're 55. There's times I wonder if me and Trav, there's a couple dumps that we dig that are pretty dusty. And there's been times I've wondered if it'd be possible to get it from those dumps, digging them for years. Robert's at 21, need 22. Really, really nice utility here, guys. <sighs> lag Tony on lag time four three two one zero oh Christina you were just out you are just out on that by like a millisecond that was Robert Hoover at 21 21 next All right, here we're gonna run. Go ahead and run a squat soda. Um, I'm guessing 1870s on this one. It's a Johnson and Company from Philly. I think I ran a couple of these uh, a couple weeks ago. It has the um, Celtic looking J on the base or on the back of it. No damage at all, just real hazy. Nothing on the base. Nice little squat soda, 1870s. Has a nice color to it though. Um, start this one out at $20. $20 start on the Johnston & Company from Philly. Squat soda, 1870s. I mean, it could be 1860s. I'm not 100%. Twenty dollars start on the Johnston and Company out of Philly squat soda. Roberts at 20. Let's start the clock. Clock rolling. That does have a nice color. Need 21 or more. Late 60s, early 70s, squat soda. Johnston and Company, Philadelphia. Real crude. Some of these I have have a dot on the base. Yep, that one's got four or five, five dots on the base. Some of them don't. Some of them have one dot on the base. See, I know in, in the snuff bottle. Yeah, that, I know. I was looking at that and I was like. I think the out of medicine was too. Maybe. I don't know. They're early. Yeah, they are. 21 or more. Really nice squat soda out of Philly. Well, 
you don't do anything else. No, it comes right back. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. All right, nice. If you want to rerun that, you can. Uh... That's all right. On lag. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. We got it. That's tattoo Steve at 22. Nice. Yep, we had a malfunction there, but we got it right back pretty quick. Tattoo Steve got that for 22. Switch out, switch out for another one. I'm just going through there. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I don't want to do the same thing. It's the same one. Yeah. <laughs> same one. Jeffrey. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. Yep. All right. Here's a different one. Here's we, here's one we haven't ran ever in the auction of squat soda. This is a uh, J. Edwards out of Chester, PA squat soda. Um, it is smooth base. No pawnal. It has a, a cork in it. No damage. None whatsoever. Nice drippy lip there. You can see. J. Edwards. Really embossing too, you can see Edwards kind of has like little dots in it. Um, let's start this one out at, let's start the Edwards out at 30. $30 start on the J. Edwards out of Chester, PA, squat soda, 1870s. I'll say 1860s, 1870s, because I'm not a hunter. Them late 60s and early 70s sodas look so close to one another that it's hard to tell. The only way you can usually know is by the variant. The embossing. Or unless you've dug the bottle quite often. I doubt this one's going to glow. Usually your aquas don't. No, Keenan. Never heard of that one. But whoever was asking about that court, uh, or the big Wyant brothers, I have seen them before. I've seen a few of them, actually. J. Edwards out of Chester, PA. Super clean squat, too. $30 start. J. Edwards Chester PA Squatty. It's even double stamped. Yeah, is there's something weird the about the embossing. Robert says 30. Robert says, I'll take it then. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Need 31 or more. 31 or more. Clock is rolling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Running down straight sides. 
It does. It's got me sweating. <laughs> Lag, Jeff. Hey, tell him, guys, no mercy. I no mercy. Auction. The whole auction by myself. Yeah, but it's hot in here now. That's 50 bucks. <sighs> I don't know why, but doing the auction makes it sweat. Yeah, it does. I'm burning calories right now. I'm sitting on my butt. <laughs> Yay! <Yeah. laughs> Thirty-one or more on the super lag, Rebecca, on the super clean J. Edwards. Chester, Pennsylvania. This is a super clean squat. On lag. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. And that was Robert Hoover at 30. Robert took at it $30. Nice, Robert. That was a really pretty soda. That was 10. It was? Mm hmm. There's really 10 over there sitting? Mm-hmm. Holy mackerel. You sure? Yeah. Holy mackerel. I must have put like 13 over here. How the heck did I do that? I don't know. Something wrong with you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't. Look, you put one of yours over here. Did I? <laughs> yeah, I still got it. Wait right. a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I got one more. Alright. Alright, for my last <laughs> one. For my last one of this run. Almost pulled it off, guys. Trev almost got it. Jeez, I <laughs> From my last one, check this thing out. Look at the Benicia on the front of this thing. Uh, it's so shiny, it's like gold. It's crazy. And this is early. This is a uh, Civil War era. Really nice early um dr jane's expectorant look at the niche on that thing super shiny really cool looking bottle um it is what is that snap mold yeah snap case yeah snap case you can see the line there 1860s civil war era really really nice drippy lip on this guy look at it Left some dirt in there for you so you can see how dominant the drip is, how crude it is. I always like to leave a little bit of dirt on the rim. I think it looks good. But, um, no damage, just Benicia all over it. Super, super pretty bottle. Dr. Jane's Expectorant out of Philly. Because of the uh, <clears throat> bottle mold mark. Just years of picking bottles up. Just seeing what's came out of holes. Um, in, in my honest opinion, the only people that can date glass are the people that's digging it. So, if something came out of a hole where you're digging 1850s and 1860s bottles, then there's probably a 95% chance that it's 1850s, 1860s, unless it was in the cap. Um, yeah, this is Civil War era. Uh, let's do a $20 start. Really, really pretty med, and it's pretty big. Oh yeah, these, these are eight, this is an 1860s bottle all day, seven inches tall. Yeah, we've dug seltzers. We've dug seltzers 
and syrup bottles. I dug a uh, super rare syrup bottle and I sold it years ago and I wish I never would, it was local. Yep, hyphenated Philly. Has a wonky top to it too, a wonky apply. Just missed pawn on this one, guys. Just missed it. Dr. D. James Expector out of Philadelphia with a really, really nice patina on it. And the inside of this could be cleaned up a little bit for sure. Beautiful bottle. 20 dollar start Border Ruffy and says 20 All right, right on. Let's run the clock. This is a beautiful bottle, guys. You get this in your hands, you're going to be like, wow. This is one of the ones where the Benicia almost kind of makes it hard to sell. Even on the front panel, the Benicia is just, like, incredible. Really nice Benicia. Super crude glass, too. Snap case mold. Rebecca Shoops Grove was awesome. We didn't get to stay for a super long time, but uh, the time that we were there, we had a blast. It was fun. Dustin's at 24, need 25. Dustin, do we have your information? No, I don't have it. Dustin, before you can bid, you got to send your information to both of these email addresses up here in the back. As soon as the bottle moves, we're going to be switching after this bottle. So as soon as the bottle moves, go ahead and send your uh, information to both of them. Right here. Tattoos at 25. On lag. Four. Three. Two, one, zero. I think I think I remember him commenting on the Facebook page or something. For some reason, the name rings a bell. I don't know why. It, was he the high bidder? No, tattoo was the twenty-five. Okay. What's up, Rockhound? All right, that's my 10. Trav's going to sit back down the hot seat. And it is hot, literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's going to have to get even harder when I put these bottles up. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, I'm back. We're going to jump drop down to uh, running five apiece now. I'm going to start off with a really, really nice, beautiful teal Congress and Empire Spring Company Congress water out of Saratoga, New York. This one's got the larger block letter C. 
Appreciate that, Rock Hound. Hey, big shout out to Rock Hound. Check out his channel, guys. This dude uh, digs some really amazing Native American artifacts and bottles and all kinds of really cool stuff. Appreciate that, brother. Thanks for stopping in. But we got a Teal Congress water, guys. This one's got two dots on the base of it there, you can see. Nice applied top. Big block letter C. Let's uh <clears throat> let's hit this one with the new with the new light here and see how it does. There we go. Check that out, guys. 1870s Congress water in a nice emerald green, almost teal color. You like the new light? That looks pretty sweet, don't it? Check out Luke Duke Outdoors. Yeah, yeah, big time. That's a good channel as well. We got Tony Cigar at 45. Clock is rolling. You guys like the new high-powered LED light? Pretty sweet, huh? Need 46 or higher. 46 or higher. Got a minute and 40 seconds on the clock. You guys can thank the wife for that purchase. Uh, she opened it up yesterday and said, Here you go, honey. Here's a present for you. I've been telling her I need an extremely bright light for these darker colors. And uh, she came through. Great, great girl. Love you, baby. She's not feeling good today after uh, being out in the sun all day yesterday, but that's all right. She's at home resting. One minute on the clock, guys. Need 46 or higher on the emerald green, almost teal Congress and Empire Springs out of Saratoga, New York. <clears throat> I forgot to add, no damage. No damage on this bottle. 40 seconds on the clock. Yeah, she's definitely a keeper, Steven, brother. Absolutely. Twenty seconds left on the clock. <clears throat> I'm gonna turn the light back on here for you. Need forty six or higher. We're on lag time now. <clears throat> Gales at fifty six. Need fifty eight or higher. In five. Four, three, two, one, zero. Arnie at 58 on the snipe. Arnie at 58. Nice pickup on that, brother, man. And yeah, I actually did have a really nice run of Congress waters in my collection. I just decided that uh, it's not really something I collect too much. So time to let them go. Believe it or not, that was my last Congress water out of my collection. Yeah, that was a nice one, Arnie. Real nice one. Next up is one that a uh, bunch of people were commenting on. Check this out, guys. This is a nice early pepper sauce. And this is actually embossed down here, if you look down here near the base. This is an old E.R. Durkee and Company. It, it doesn't say Durkee, it just says E.R.D. and Company. Patented February 17th, 1874. So this is an 1870s, 1880s sauce bottle. The bottom of it says E.R. Durkee and Company, New York. So check that out, guys. Woo! 1870s, 1880s, ER Durkee. 
in a light aqua. My gosh, look at the light on that thing. That might be a little overkill. I don't know. You guys like that? Should I go back to the light to the uh, early. less dim light? Yeah, right. These are early. Let's try the other light. This one's a little little bright. <laughs> There we go, that's better. Dude, this light's insane. My wife got for us. You think that's Baltimore? It probably is, you're probably right. All right guys, so I, I, I uh, got the smaller light out. I was gonna say $25 start, there's no damage on this, but we'll do it at 20, we'll do it at 20. Matthew's at 20. You need 21 or higher. This is a pepper sauce, Bobby J, from the 1870s, 1880s time frame. And it is embossed. ERD and company patented 1874. Ruth Cigars at 25. Thank you, sister lady. 26 or higher. 26 or higher. Yeah, it's a ni real nice bottle. Matthew Carroll's at 28. Need 29 or higher, guys. This is a ice blue or glacier blue color. Really, really beautiful. No damage at all. 1870s, 1880s. I'm going to turn the light back on just to give you a little different perspective on it. Ray said he's got one like this, but the, only the bottom's embossed. Heck yeah, brother. Well, this is yours, man. I know you're holding out for that Weber bottle, but this is another one you need in your collection. Roost Cigars at 32. <laughs> need 33 or higher, guys. 1870s, 1880s, E.R. Durkee and Company. Pepper sauce. No damage. Very, very clean. Preston McDaniels at 35. Thank you, brother. Need 36 or higher. Bring on the great uncle's bottle. I will, brother. It's coming up. I'll bring it out in my next run, okay? The great uncle. Yeah, the Weber, the Weber uh, pony blob in there. We're on lag, guys. Here we go. Five, four, three, two. One, zero, Preston McDaniel on the snipe at $50. Oh, Daryl, your 55 was out by a millisecond, brother. Preston got that one at 50. Nice pickup on that. Nice pickup on that, Preston, brother, man. <clears throat> Number 13 for me, guys. Check this out. I got a sweet little midget. Mason's Patton, November 30th, 1858. It's got the uh, 20 on the base of it with the 26 and 67 patent dates. And also, it's got the uh, CFJ... Hero cross on the back side of it. Check that out. Ground lip, screw top. The ground lip does have a few little dings in it from taking the lid on and off. I didn't do the Cincinnati bottle yet, no. No closure on this one, but a sweet little midget nonetheless. In aqua color. With the Hero Cross CFJ on the on the back. How about a $15 start, guys? $15 start on the Midget Mason CFJ.
Charles White's going to start us at 15. Got a couple 15s coming in. <coughs> Got some Doug Bottle dirt going around on the platform here. Try to clean it off. Yeah, that's a different one I got. Cool. I got that one at Shoops yesterday. Yeah, that's a cool From uh, William. Need 16 or higher, guys. Minute and 40 on the clock. We got Corey Doc at 17. Thank you, brother. Need 18 or higher on the little midget. Mason's patent. 1858 with the CFJ Hero Cross on the back. 18 or higher. The Amber Squat Mason. You mean a midget? I've never heard of a squat mason before. Second camera point on you for more character. Yeah, I've thought about doing that, Mitchell, but I, we don't have that kind of setup just yet, brother. Still using the iPhone, and then just a regular TV as my second monitor. Believe it or not, I'm not that tech savvy. I'm just learning as I go. Hopefully, eventually, I'll be able to do that double double camera thing. You're right. That would be uh, a lot better presentation. I agree with you. Luke Collins is at 30. Thank you, brother. We're at 30 seconds. We need 31 or higher, guys. Mason's patent, November 30th, 1858, with the CFJ Hero Cross on the back. Hey, what's up, Glass from the past? How's it going, brother? 10 seconds on the clock. Need 31 or higher on the Midget Masons 1858. Ground Lip Holly Lavins at 35. Lag time now. Here we go in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Luke Collins at 36. Susan, your 36 was after his, and your 37 was out by just a millisecond. Uh, Luke got that one at 36. Nice pickup on that, brother, man. All right, number 14 of the night is going to be a really nice amber blob top, guys. Check it out. This is an August Reinig. August Reinig, 2107 Germantown Avenue, Philadelphia. Sweet blob. It's got the original stopper, the original wire bail closure. No damage. The back of it says this bottle not to be sold. In a really nice light amber color. Probably 1880s, 1890s with a 1.A on the base of it. Check that out. Zoom out for you here. August Reinig. Amber blob top. No damage. Super clean. Like I said, light amber in color. Let's go with a $35 start on this one, guys. $35 start. August Reinig. No damage. With the original closure. Things are going to start getting a little crazier at this point in the game, guys. Need a $35 start on the August Reinig Amber Blob. Out of Philadelphia, Jeff Jollis at 35. Clock is rolling. Here we go. 36 or higher. Jeff sent me new info. Oh, has he got new? Yeah. Okay. Good deal. We got a bright timer. We got a bright amber blob. We got a bright white background. Everything's nice and bright. 
Gail Copinger's at 36. Thank you, brother man. We need 37 or higher on the beautiful 1880s, 1890s Amber Blob. I'm so scared, so I'm not even messing on there. I'm there. I was all on it. Yeah, I did too. Top one's a lot. What'd you do with my other one that was sitting there? With this thing down inside of it. You didn't run that? Guy? No. <laughs> That's my information that's on it. On it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, what? 37 or higher, guys. No damage on this sweet, sweet light amber blob with the original closure. 1880s, 1890s. August Reinig. 2107 Germantown Avenue, Philadelphia. Nice slug plated beer. And a beautiful honey amber. 45 seconds on the clock. Need 37 or higher. Heck yeah, Luke, brother, you will. That's a sweet jar, brother. 30 seconds on the clock, guys. Amber August Reinig out of Philadelphia. 20 seconds. Need 37 or higher. Yeah, I do too. I, I especially like digging them. I've only dug like three, I think. We're on lag now, guys. It did jump up to about 12 seconds, so a little bit longer. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Gail Copinger, you got that at $36, brother. Man, yeah. That's a sweet, sweet pickup right there. Sweet pickup. All right, guys, next up on the auction block, we've got a gorgeous tombstone slug-plated hut, just the first touch of the night, in an ice blue. Check this one out. This is a J.W. Mulberry out of Oak Hill, New York, tombstone slug-plate. That means it's an earlier one, 1880s. And this is from the Carl Hutter out of New York. It's got a 10E on the base of it, 10E. The back of it says, this bottle not to be sold. In an ice blue or glacier blue color. No damage at all on this, guys. This is a sweet, sweet hutch. This guy is listed as rare in the hutch book. Here's the number if you want to look it up. NY0866.5. Mint condition. That means there's less than 10 of these known. So we're gonna go with a $100 start. $100 start on the JW Mulberry out of Oak Hill, New York. Pristine condition, no damage, really nice embossing. 1880s Hutch out of Oak Hill, New York, J.W. Mulberry. <laughs> Need a $100 start. This is rare, guys. This is really, really hard to get your hands on right here. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit does look kind of like Billy, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be some, some really nice, big, heavy hitters coming out, guys. Charles White goes at 100. Thank you, brother. Clock is rolling. 
Remember, we're on $5 increments at 100. If we make it to two on anything, it'll be $10 increments. Right now, we're on five. Need 105 or higher. 105 or higher. J.W. Mulberry, Oak Hill, New York. Tombstone slug plated Hutchison. 1880s. No damage. Rare bottle. Yeah, America. <laughs> I love America. Sometimes we make really dumb decisions, but I still love America. Fought for it for eight years. Minute and 15 seconds on the clock. J.W. Mulberry, Oak Hill, New York. Luke Collins, yes, if they are rare, we talk to the Hutchbook people, that means there's less than 10 known. If it's scarce, that means that it's one through 100. There's less than 100 known. Big jump from rare to scarce. 45 seconds on the clock. 23 years, Charles. Thanks for your service, brother, man. That's what I'm talking about. 35 seconds on the clock. Need 105 or higher on the rare hutch. Yeah, you're right on that, Kevin. It is we the people. <laughs> J.W. Mulberry, Oak Hill, New York, Tombstone Hutch. 105 or higher. Less than 10 known. Absolutely awesome bottle right here. We're on lag time now. 105 or higher. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Charles, you got that, brother, at bare minimum. Heck of a pickup on that. Congratulations. That is one sexy hutch. The Weber is coming up next, as well as is my first historical. A hundred, Charles White. I'm gonna turn it back over to Corey. I'll see you guys back after five. Hey, you're welcome, Luke. You're welcome, brother. Hey, law enforcement, any anything that uh, you know is for your country, I support 100%. As long as they're in your life. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> don't, just don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, bear with me for a second, you guys. Try to grab a couple more. Let's start it out. All right, I'm gonna start off with a another hutch that is actually in hutch book is rare. Also, it is a S. Snyderman. It says SS on it, and it's out of Philadelphia. Um, this one's also in hutch book at rare. I did have the number written down on the base, but it is not there anymore. As you can see, um, S. Snyderman out of Philadelphia, rare, listed as rare in Hutch Book. Um, this one is clear, no damage, no damage at all. Um, since it's clear, I'm going to start this one out at $80. $80 start on the rare SS Hutch. Yeah, that is pretty cool. 
Super Sport. The Super Sport Hutch. Mm -hmm. Me and Trav were actually just behind a, uh, we, we're not 100% sure if it was a Challenger or a Charger. I'm not 100% sure. It couldn't have been because it's Dodge. They're Dodge. It had to have been. But you said it ended with ER. Didn't yeah, it ended with ER, but it said SS on it, and it was mean. Couldn't quite see what it was. Can you hand me a power drink? Big sir. Eighty dollars start on the rare S Snyderman out of Philly. What's up, bottle bug? It is a Steve Smith hutch. Holy crap. <laughs> Roberts at eighty. Let's start the clock. Clock is rolling. <laughs> That's cool. I got. I gotta say that I think my favorite has to be the '69 Camaro. I'm pretty sure everybody says that, but that's it. That's the car. That is the car. I like Barracudas though. Barracudas have really, really nice body styles. The SS Hutch out of Philly. S. Snyderman, Philadelphia, PA, with the SS embossed in the middle of the slug. This is considered a watermelon slug because it's oval. 67 GT 500. There ain't nothing like a muscle car that is. That's for real. What was her name? Who is she? Annabelle. Annabelle. On that car. Yeah. It might have said that. No, with the, the one that, remember the cars that got stolen? Gone in 60 seconds. Gone in 60 seconds. With Nicholas Cage. I haven't watched that since I was a little kid. Wasn't the, the co one car he stole was a GT500. Yeah, I think it was. I think it did have a name, too. I can't remember what the name of it was. 50s vets. Yeah, they're smooth. Me and Trav saw a garage full of them one day when we were digging a privy. Um, on lag. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. That was Robert Hoover at $80 on the S. Snydermans. Heck yeah, brother. Snyderman. All right, next, check this guy out right here. Here's a really, really cool bottle. This is a hutch, too. This is considered a hutch. Um, it has, instead of a slug plate, it has a scroll. This is like a paper scroll that the embossing's inside of. It says, R. Soder, 1604 Thompson Street, Philadelphia. And look at the bottom of it. Check out the bottom of this this bottle. It's unreal. Nothing on the base, but really, really cool bottle. It has a little teeny ding right there. It's really nothing at all. Um, on the back, check this out. It has the sun. The sun is on the back of it. It says trademark registered. Really, really cool tall hutch. Um, applied. And check this out. It has a green. It's got green in the neck and the lip. Really, really cool bottle. Um, the hutch book number on this one I actually do have. It is PA2086.5. There's your hutch book number right there. Um, this one actually, there's no information on it. Hutch book holds no information on this bottle. So 
there's no rarity listed on it. I'd imagine most of the ones that don't have anything listed. I talked to the Hushbrook people. The no rarity means it hasn't been turned Has, in. Yeah, it hasn't been turned in by any collector. So um, that being said, I'm going to start this one out at $100. $100 start. Super, super cool bottle. I've not seen anything like it. Yeah, that hush is one of the kind for sure. There can't be too many of them. Robert's at 100. Let's start the clock. That's a wild, wild hush. Kind of like Wild, Wild West. Yeah, it is. Wild, wild hush. It's got a scroll on it instead yeah, of a slug plate. A scroll plate. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Dang weather, I'd be all about that. Robert says he's already in the doghouse. Heck with it. <laughs> Robert, us men tend to always be in the doghouse or right outside the door waiting. <laughs> Flag Steve. Lag Logan. All right. We're at a hundred dollars, guys. Need one oh five or more. Really, really nice bottle here. Has a scroll parchment paper as the uh, slug plate. Really cool bottle. Is listed in Hutch Book, but there's no rarity on this bottle. So nobody's turned one in. On lag. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. And that was Robert Hoover at a hundred. Robert Hoover at a hundred. That was a shaky one. Next. That was a heck of a pickup on that. Bro. Yeah, it was. Check this guy out. Here we got a cologne. 1860s. Possibly 1850s. Um, it is open panel. It's got a scar panel on it. It's really hard to see, but it is there. Sharp edge panel there. There it is. You can kind of see it. Kind of a lighter panel on this one. Um, super crazy whittling. You can see there. The whittling in this bottle is pretty epic. Beautiful cologne or perfume. Um, it does, however, have a little, little lippy there going on. Little tiny, nothing, nothing crazy. Beautiful bottle, open panel cologne. Um, let's start it out at, let's start the open panel cologne out at, we'll do a $20 start, $20 start.
Civil War era. Ponald cologne. Open Ponald cologne. $20 start. Right, early 1860s. Logan's at 20. Let's start the clock. This is a beautiful bottle, too, guys. Really clean. Um, it is six and a quarter inches. So, not real small. Would be a really nice display piece. Um, killer bottle. A lot of these bottles were made in the same factories as historical flasks. It actually has a similar shape to a uh, scroll flask if you look at it close. Roberts at 22, need 23. That thing is super whittled in the middle. Josh is at 25, need 26. Yeah, that's real nice. We got it down to 10 seconds. Yeah. What this next? <laughs> <laughs> Yee! <-hee. laughs> Logan's at 26, need 27. For the giveaway. For the giveaway? <laughs> we 10 of them. Yeah, we're gonna do something nice for the giveaway. As long as we get a hundred, we gotta get a hundred thumbs up. So yeah, we gotta get a hundred thumbs ups to give a giveaway out. Josh is at thirty. Need thirty-one. Really nice open panel. Probably eighteen early eighteen sixties uh, cologne or perfume. Beautiful bottle. Steve's at thirty-five. Need thirty-six. On leg. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. That was Steve Dungan at 35. 35. Nice pickup, Steve, brother. Yeah, that's a beautiful bottle. All right. Check this guy right here out. I love this bottle. It's just got so much character to it. Um, so, this is an ale. And it is super crude. Super bubbly. I'm talking bubbles everywhere. Stretch bubbles. It's just bubbled out. Check this one out. Look, there's a big old stretchy bubble. Look at this one. Good. Huge, massive bubbles. Stretch all the way up through the neck. Really crude. Got some whittling going on to it. Still bubbles just everywhere, all over the bottle. Full of bubbles. And here's another interesting one. It is an iron panel, and it has like some sharpness to it, like an open panel would. Right here is like a real sharp edge of glass. It's sharp all around the edge right here. Really interesting. Um, however, there is no embossing on this. It is a slick ale iron panel with some characteristics of an open panel. And a uh, really cool bottle. Yeah, it's a solid 10 on the crudeness scale. Even... Look at how wonky and drippy applied that lip is onto there. Absolutely excellent bottle. Super nice color. It's like a green teal. Uh, 1850s. Let's do a $50 start on this guy. $50 start on this beautiful iron panel with open panel characteristics. Super crazy bubbly. Squatty ale. Porter ale. Could have been a soda.
This bottle just has a crazy color to it. Are you it. doing that this run? Hmm? Are you doing that this run? Yeah, boy. Tippy. <laughs> Feeling a little tippy. $50 start, guys. This is a killer bottle. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind putting it back on my shelf. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a bid on it? No. Did you see how bubbly this thing yeah. is? Oh my gosh! It's a sweet, sweet IP. Mhm. Mm oh, Charles says no. You ain't putting it back on your <laughs> shelf. <laughs> Dang it, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Charles says 50, 52, 52 or more. I don't know what that thing is. Oh, it's got the little trailer on it. Yeah, it's got the fly. Is it getting it? What's it getting? Is it a deer fly? Oh, I hate them things. It is a deer fly. How'd that thing get in here? They're nasty, man. Yeah, but it's in our it's in our territory now. It's not. I don't know what to do. That thing catches you out in the woods. It's gonna tear you up. <laughs> Need fifty two or more. Fifty two or more. Yeah, it is. It is a deer fly. I don't know where it went. They're them ones that like try to sting your face. They try to bite your face. And they keep, they're relentless, man. Like, you smack at them and they're tough as nails. Oh, I'll get that thing. They pick you up and smash you off the ground. A <laughs> <laughs> productions manager. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Charles. They, well, well, the deer fly, man. Like, horse flies suck. They do. But they're not as mean as a deer fly. Them deer flies, they're, they're evil. They're like a honey badger. They're little. But, man, they will tear you up. They'll try to bite you, like, multiple times. And, like, you, they can bite you 20 times in three seconds, I think. There was at 55. Need 57. 57 or more. Rapid bite. Yeah, rapid bite. That's exactly what it is, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's like a perk on Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> on lag time. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Daryl Swim at 55. Daryl Goddard at 55. That's a pretty bottle, too, Daryl. You're going to like that when you get it. I mean, it's it's so crude. All right. Here's one I'm pretty sure a bunch of yous have been waiting for. Here she is. Hold on just a second. There it is. Tip of canoe bitters. Absolutely gorgeous, stunning bottle. Tip of canoe bitters in a really nice color, too. It says H.H. H. Warners and Company. One of my favorite bottles. Yep, this is one of Trav's favorite bottles. I like them too. They're really cool. I got two. I still Tip a canoe. Three. I won't sell them. And there's your canoe. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful bottle. Um, it says Patton, November 20th, 83, Rochester, New York. We are gonna do a one eighty five start. One eighty five start on the tip of canoe bitters. 
from Rochester, New York. Yeah. Nice applied top. Really strange tops on these. Charles says 185. Let's start the clock. This is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful tip of canoe here. No damage at all. Absolutely mint. Mint specimen. Gonna get into the big heavy hitters now. Yeah, next couple runs are gonna be crazy stuff. Need one ninety five or more, guys. One ninety five or more. I'll mix in a couple like medium hitters. Not all real, real high. Wait, 190 or more is what I need. One, <laughs> 190 or more. Say yeah, I was, no, I was one, 195. Oh, I, I was doing increments of 10 already. <laughs> 190 or more on the tip of canoe bitters out of Rochester, New York. Absolutely beautiful bottle. It is. That, this thing is so sexy. That one's got real nice and balsam to it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, Daryl, about 1910, 1915, yep. Right on the money. Thing's nice, isn't it? Super dark, dark chocolate amber. That is a good price, David. <whistles> On lag. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Nice, Gail. Gail snuck in at two fifteen. On the Warners. Nice scale. That's a really, really, really yeah, awesome brother, bottle. Man. You're in the, the tip of canoe club now. Yep. Beautiful bottle. I love them. That was my five. Try to sit back down. I do like the tip of canoe. I like the tree bark and the that was five the already. log. Yeah, the log, the log look to it and everything, and the canoe embossed on it, but. When it comes to trees on bottles, I love the pine tree cordials. They're the best. They are the best. They're killer. I like the pine trees too. Real nice. guys here we be here we be this next five is gonna be some good stuff Ray you out there brother man it's time for the George Weber the George Weber apparently this is Ray's great uncle or something like that it's got two really nice stars embossed on it there with the GW at monogram Weiss beer out of Albany New York Sweet little squat pony blob. This bottle not to be sold on the back. This is Ray's great uncle right here. Grizz Grunkle. <laughs> oh, man. You see how dark that is, though, guys, with that light? So let's put the, uh, let's put the bright light underneath of it and see what we got here. Go ahead and crack that on. There we go. That 
There we go. <laughs> the Weber's love alcohol. Yeah, this is. This is a nice medium amber George Weber Weiss beer out of Albany, New York. We're going to go with a $60 start, guys. $60 start on this one. Eighteen seventies, eighteen eighties, and a real nice medium amber. No damage. Is an hour from you considered local? Uh, no, I wouldn't consider it local, but I mean it's close enough that we still hold on to stuff like that, but not necessarily collecting. That's stuff that we sell normally, an hour away. Yeah, Adam, you got it. Let me turn the uh, main light off, guys. Give me one second here. Turn this light off in here. All right, guys, now we just only have... That's all we have for the light now is inside the light box. It's completely pitch black in the office. We have a minute and 25 seconds on the clock. Need six or 70, 67 or higher, 67 or higher. Yeah, it, it is really, really neat. That, that new light that my wife got is awesome. I like it. it. Makes the bottle look really nice on the TV screen too. One minute left on the clock, guys. Yeah, bottles, nightlight. Charles, that's a good question, brother. I'll have to ask her. It is called a Max Force, though. It's called a Max Force. I'll have to ask her where she got it from. 45 seconds on the clock. Need 67 or higher on the George Weber Amber Squat Pony Blob. Just an absolutely gorgeous... Yeah, Adam, I'm not sure about the light. I'll uh, I'll post it in tomorrow's video, though, okay? I'll ask the wife when I get home and, and uh, post it. Weber is Weber. Weber. That's how it's pronounced, Weber. All right. Ten seconds, guys. Get your bids in. Need 67 or higher. 67 or higher. We're on lag time now. All right, Adam, that's a great idea. I will do that. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Bobby J. No, weather. Weather on the snipe at 74 on the end of zero. Oh, my gosh. Ray, brother, man. All the bids was flying in. Just ahead of you, Bobby. Ray got that at 74. Look at the increase in the light there. That was a heck of a pickup on that, Ray. Right as I was finishing zero. I held it for you, too. <laughs> that was nice, man. The Weber Amber Blob. Going back to the family. Nice. I'm glad you were able to pull that off, brother, man. I was rooting for you. It is real hot. You're right. All right, guys. Next bottle up. You can go ahead and turn the light back on, Corey. I only, only show the dark ones like that. That worked great on that Weber, though. All right, guys, next bottle up. Check this out. We got a really nice one-quart double eagle historical and a nice aqua, light aqua color. Hinge mold. Double eagle. Real nice applied top. The 
dogs are going nuts outside for the fire engine whistle. <laughs> they blow it. They think it's their mask. Real nice bubble right there going down through the neck. You guys can see no damage whatsoever on this flask. Really nice one quart aqua double eagle historical flask. Eighteen sixties, eighteen seventies, attic mint. <laughs> We're gonna go with a hundred dollar start. Hundred dollar start on the one quart double eagle historical flask. Yeah, the the uh, fire department is only like a block away from here, so they must be getting a call right now. So the alarm is literally right at the end of the road. $100 start, guys, on the Double Eagle Historical Flask. One quart, no damage, attic mint. You have that siren if a stranger comes into town? Wow. I've never heard of that before. That's very, very cool. All right, we got Mr. Dale. Mr. Melasco at 100. We got Charles White at 110. We need 115 or higher. 115 or higher. On the one quart double eagle historical flask. No damage. Really nicely embossed double eagle on both sides. Real nice applied top. Hinge mold base. 1860s, 1870s. Mr. Dale's at 115. Tattoo Steve's at 145. Thanks, brother man. Need 150 or higher. Is that right, Weather? Lag check, Preston McDaniel. Thank you, brother. That was a really nice pickup on that one, Ray. I'm glad you were able to get that. We got Charles White at 155. Thank you, brother. Need 160 or higher. Just under a minute left to go. I apologize for the siren in the background, guys. There's absolutely nothing I can do about that. Forty seconds on the clock. Need 160 or higher on the one quart double eagle historical flask. Attic mint, no damage. Twenty-five seconds on the clock. <laughs> no, nah, they're not they're not looking for Corey. Not yet anyway. Preston's at 160. We're on lag now, guys. 165 or higher. Yeah, the flash does deserve the siren. That, that's great. Four, three, two, one, zero. Bobby J at 160. Seven, Bobby J at 167. Charles, your 175 was out by a little over a second. Bobby J picked up the beautiful one court double eagle. Nice pickup on that, brother man. And number 18, here's another one that you guys have been uh, eyeballing. I've seen a lot of hearts and stuff on the Facebook page. Check this out, guys. This is a nice uh, teal-colored lactopeptine for all digestive ailments. And if you look on the little cross there, it actually has a 
A-N-A-D. I'm not real sure what that exactly stands for, but there you go. This is a uh, ground lip screw top, so around 1890s to about 1905. Nothing on the base. Sweet, sweet little uh, bottle there, guys. Check that out. It is tiny. It is really tiny. It stands two inches tall. Two inches tall on the teal lactopeptine for all ailments. <laughs> Mark could use that now. All right, guys, we're going to go with... Yeah, this is a beautiful color on this one. Let's go. Let's start at twenty dollars. Twenty dollars start on the teal lactopeptine. No damage on this one. Really nice early ground lip. We got a couple twenties. Clock is rolling. Here we go. A 21 or higher. Right now, Logan is on top at 20. That's who I saw first. Christina Lacey's at 25. Thank you, sister lady. Need 26 or higher on the teal lactopeptine for all digestive ailments. Just two inches tall. Beautiful ground lip screw top. Whether should the Weber bottling switch to soda during the prohibition and continued as star bottling until the 1950s. Oh, sweet. I appreciate that, Ray. I do, brother. Guys, if we get to 100 thumbs up before 11 o'clock, we'll do a sweet giveaway. If not, you'll have to wait till next time and try again. That's just a little perk that we do for you guys for the uh, support. Need 26 or higher. 26 or higher. 50 seconds on the clock. Lactopeptine for all digestive ailments. Ground lip screw top. No damage. Logan's at 27. Thank you, brother. Need 28 or higher. Christina Lacey's at 28. Thank you, sister lady. 29 or higher, guys. 15 seconds left to bid. We're on lag time now. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Charles White on the snipe at $34. Nice pickup on that, brother, man. That's a sweet, sweet bottle. Very nice. Oh, Daryl and Christina, you guys were out by a couple seconds. You might want to make sure you do your uh, lag checks on the next on the next run here. Somebody was asking about the Potters. Here it is, guys. Here's an Amber Mrs. Potters Hygienic Supply Company out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Number one, it says on it. The giveaway is going to be sweet. This is a blown-in mold around 1890s. And it actually says loan. I've never seen one like that. L-O with a dash over top of it. N, I believe that's an E. Or backwards B. I have no idea. You guys ever seen anything like that? Uh, leave me alone. 
<laughs> Mrs. Potter's Hygienic Supply Company. I'm gonna let you guys run with it. No damage on that bottle. Sweet little uh, amber druggist out of Cincinnati. Here we go. It's loon. Loon, okay. That's what I feel like a loon right now, Logan. Don't be a loon. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Carroll's at 20. Need 21 or higher. 21 or higher. Holly Lavin's at 25. Thank you, sister lady. Need 26 or higher. It is roasting in here tonight. Whew. We're about to get, get us a fan. I'm going to put my head in the uh, refrigerator when I go on break. Oh, no. Matthew Carroll. Lag check, Christina Lacey. I'm sorry, sister lady. I was blabbing. Matthew Carroll at 26. It's D number one. Is that what it is? D number one. Yeah, you're right. It is D number one. <laughs> so it's not loan. It's not loon. It's actually a B. It looks like a B. I'm thinking. I see two little two little uh, spaces in there. B number one. B number one. That's like me and Corey. B number one. <laughs> Holly Levin's at 28. Need 29 or higher. 29 or higher. <laughs> Mrs. Potter's Hygienic Supply out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Lag check, Jeff Bauman. Thank you, brother. 10 seconds on the clock. Yeah, it's inspirational. Absolutely. Charles White's at 30, and we are on lag now, guys. Get your beds in. Here we go. Holly Lavin's at 33. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Jeff Bauman on the snipe at 35. Nice, brother, man. That's how it's done. B number 1. Jeff Bauman at 35. Jeff Boffman. <coughs> Jeff Boffman. <coughs> Thirty what? Thirty-five. <laughs> Kevin, I'm just playing, brother man. I'm just playing, guys. I hope you know that. What is it? About what? B number one. Oh. No, I am really humble. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Every opportunity we get to dig, the fact that we live in a really historical area. And have all the old history around us. Very, very fortunate for sure. Oh, what, in bottle digging? Oh, there's other bottle diggers out there that some people don't even know about. They don't even show people what they find to find some interesting Yeah, there stuff. is. Like uh, our buddy that we dug with in Ohio, Mike Yankowski. Super incredible digger. But check this out, guys. This is a sweet little tiny poison. I actually dug this. And a couple videos ago at the ending where we went over to uh, my buddy Sean's dump and I recorded that little pocket. Remember I, remember you seen just this part sticking out of the hole? And I was like, I think that's a poison, guys. But anyway, this is it. This is the poison bottle. It's got a 68F on the base. Five chicken nuggets sounds really good right now, brother. Blown in mold. Around 1890s, turn of the century. Small little tiny amber poison. No damage at all on that one. Check that out. Let's go with a $15 start. $15 start on the tiny little amber poison blown in mold. We got Hunter at 15. We got Christina at 20. Clock is running. You need 21 or higher. Twin Diggers is at 25. Logan's at 35. 
Thank you, brother. Need 36 or higher. On the small little amber poison blown in mold, no damage. Cleaned up superb. Christina Lacey's at 40. Thank you, sister lady. 41 or higher. 125 on the clock. I'm seeing 89 thumbs ups right now. 98 people in the room. Really appreciate everybody. Kevin, we are, I wouldn't say we're spoiled because we put in a ton and ton of work to get to those old bottles. So, I mean, you still got to work for it. Yes, they are there, but, I mean, you got to put in a serious amount of labor. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of times those laborious pits that you dig, everything's broken or it's been dipped. <laughs> Kevin says home. jealous. Here's the crazy part about it. You go home. And you're in a bad mood the rest of the night because you just put in like eight hours. Oh, you're work. crazy. I ain't never like I that. Am. I'm in a bad no mood. No way. I'm, I'm I love it. I like to see even the architecture of the pits and stuff is I really do, neat to me. When you put in eight hours of sweat. 30 seconds, guys. We need 46 or higher. 46 or higher on the small, tiny little amber poison. 68F on the base. Oh, we do. We do, Steven. We bust our butts for sure, brother. We're some digging fools. That's what it takes, too. You just persistence. You just got to keep going. We're on lag now. 46 or higher. Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one, zero! Christina Lacey on the snipe at 51. Nice, sister lady. That's a beautiful. How'd you, how'd you guys like that I called this bottle out of the hole with just that piece of it showing? <laughs> yeah, the dipping. I mean, and that was a law. That was a requirement. So the odds of getting one that hasn't been dipped, not very good unless it's over 10 feet deep. All right, that was number 20 for me. That was my fifth one. Guys, when I come back, you're going to see the, the Cobalt Sights as well as the Half Pint Cornucopia Historical Flask. I'm going to turn it back over to Corey, and I'll see you guys back after five. Afternoon. What did I pick for my last one? I didn't even pick it. You didn't pick nothing. What in the world? Did you say your last one? No, for my last, my fifth one. Oh. Uh. All right, what am I start with? Start with the another Hutch on Hutch Book. Um, this is another one of the tall ones, and I do have the number for it here. There's the number that was on it. It uh, is also another one that don't have any information listed on it. There's never been anything turned in for this one. It is on there. Has an A, a block letter A on the back. This bottle not to be sold at the heel. It's an ambro uh, Ambrosis. C. Ambrosis and Company Bottlers out of Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Um. Really, really clean bottle. Let's start out at $50. $50 start.
$50 star on the Ambrosis. I do have a lot of really, really, really nice stuff to run tonight. What are we on? You're on 20, so this will be my 20. I'm going to try to get 30 bottles in. There's going to be a lot of high-end stuff, though. So we're probably not going to run too many bottles. We'll see. We'll see how the night goes. I still have a good bit of Doug stuff. We can drop back Doug stuff later on if we want. Yeah, we could. Because we have enough footage. We don't really need to do. Mm-mm. Nobody wants this one? No, oh, somebody wants it. $50. This is a pretty tough bottle to find. Another Nobody tough one. Marshall or Keller Hutches? I don't know, Logan. I don't think. I don't we think sold all so. Marshalls. Yeah. We had some Marshalls. We sold them. $50 start. Alright. We're going to pull it. Pulling it. Let's swap that out for something else. Let's go and get a... Alright, here's one that was like the other uh, Chester Philly. Or, uh, yeah, the Ch this is Chester Street. So, uh... This is a Dr. D. Jane's alternative, and it's a different variant than the other one was. It's got a little bit of green on the inside of the lip. Um, I don't think it's got any damage. I don't think that's damage. No. Super whittled. You can see right there. It has, it's got stuff on the inside, but I think it would clean off. I think it would come right out. I should have gave this a better cleaning before I brought it down, but you can see the green inside the lip there. It's really cool looking. Like right up under the apply, it got caught. Like some carbon or something inside the glass dirt or anything that would have made it change that color. Really crude though. Prob most likely it's another snap case. So, 1860s. Uh, let's start it out at $25. $25 start on the early snap case. 1860s Dr. D. Jane's with some green in the lip. It is, isn't it, Steve? That's a killer bottle, man. I knew you'd like that. I love that bottle. What was it, a schnapps? 
Daryl. I think I've only sold one of the uh, 1860s schnapps bottles. You want a thumb one? Yeah. Really nice bottle here, guys, with the green in the lip. $25 start. I'm gonna give it a few more seconds and I'm gonna pull it. This is another decent sized bottle. It ain't a small one, it's a nice display. Here. Uh, seven inches. 25 Eastern. Charles says 25. Let's start the clock. Clock is rolling. You need 26 or more on the Jane's X. Factor 1860s paneled. This one's a paneled one, a little different from the other one. A um, little bit of green, green all around the top of the apply. Really pretty looking. Cool bottle. That one says alternative though, instead of expector. Is it alternative? It is an alternative. <laughs> Trav just pointed something out. I didn't even realize it. This is the alternative instead of the expector. So this one's actually different. Need 26 or more. 26 or more. Wonder what the alternative was. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it must not have been real good. Jeez. Expect her the alternative would be a little better sometimes. It's true. DB40. DB40? Mm -hmm. DB Cooper. <laughs> Sights. <laughs> oh shit. What's wrong with us? Bunch of loud loons. Could cough until you break a rib, Charles said. That was the alternative. <laughs> Three, two, one, zero. That was Charles White at twenty-five. Twenty-five. Nice pickup one. Yeah, there, yeah. Put some green in that left. That's pretty. That's a lot of character. It is. I like the striations. All right. The colors. Next, nice. we're gonna run a scarce hutch. This guy right here, scarce. The one listed in hutch book with the diamond on the base is listed as scarce. It is a tombstone. This right here is the hutch book number R P A. 1671 and it is scarce um it does have a ding right there a little chip in the lip and that's all that all the damage it has it's got some case wear but really nice looking bottle w callahan and company philadelphia pa Variant with the diamond on the base listed as scarce. Um, started out at thirty dollars. Thirty dollars start. Thirty dollars start. Really nice color on this one too.
Ger Sin Hatch Book. Christine is at thirty, starting the clock. I need thirty one or more. Thirty one or more on the Callahan and Company Philadelphia Scarce Hutch. <laughs> your persona your persona said scarce. <laughs> scarce is the time this is my wife and I meet. Oh shit. It's funny. It's not funny, but it is. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. brother. Yeah, I know. I'm yawning. It's hot. I think it's because it's hot in here. It's making me yawn. It's making me tired. We forgot to turn the heat off in here for the summer. It is not very chilly in here at all. <laughs> Heck no, it's roasting. Yeah, better than unknown, too. <laughs> uh, no, this one's not a quart. It is a little taller than normal hutch, but no, not a, not a quart. It is just under. Four, three, two, one, zero. That was Christina Lacey at 30. I think your phone might be putting off the most heat out of anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do when, they, when they're charging. Mm -hmm. They do get pretty hot. Throwing the heat out. Can't take it off the charge. Live, no. live feet of drink. Alright. Here's a nice little porter. Nice little squatty porter. It is a Noonich and Weast out of Philadelphia. Really cool shape to it. Beautiful bottle. Has an N and W and block on the back. And an N and W on the base. This bottle has no damage. It's in really nice condition. Really nice and clean. Um, let's start this one out at 30. $30 start on the Weast Porter Ale. 1870s. Really nice bottle. Yeah, that thing is awesome. I like the name. As soon as you get a bit, I'm going to say something. Noonich and Weast. <laughs> Christina says 30. Let's start the clock. Clock is rolling. I knew that you would at least get $30 start. <laughs> Come on, Christina. Come on, Christina. Don't mind me, guys. <laughs> Noonich, it would at least.
What's that one listed at? This is squat. Oh, it's a squat? Mm hmm Nice. Heck yeah. What's a porter? They're cool. I like the way they're shaped. Mm hmm A porter looking sailor. Looking thing. Looking. <laughs> Need 31 or more. 31 or more on the Noonich and Weist. Really pretty bottle too. Nice color. Real light blue aqua. Sky blue looking. Ten something. Ten fifteen quarter hour. Oh man, they definitely got it. You think so? We gotta get to a hundred by eleven. Oh man, a hundred by eleven to do the giveaway. Yeah. Three more likes. <laughs> On lag. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. That was Christina Lacey at 30. Dang, nice pickup on that. Yeah, nice Nunich and Weist. Check this, guys. Check it out. We got a Lockport gargling oil. And the sides actually feel and look like they were embossed with something at one time. But it seems like it got peened out or something. Really strange looking. But, um, yeah. Both sides, both panels. Super, super crude early lock port. Look at the neck. The neck is really, really twisted up and super crude looking. Beautiful bottle. Real nice teal. Nothing on the base. Absolutely beautiful gargling oil. Out of Lockport, New York. This is a Lockport green or teal. Um, let's start this out at $35. $35 start on the teal gargling oil out of Lockport, New York. Beautiful, beautiful bottle. 1870s. Christina Lacey's at 35. Let's start the clock. Need 36 or more. <laughs> right? Did you open up the main door? I keep shutting it on accident. No, I, it's, I shut it off. Oh, it's cool out there. Yeah, but I don't know if they come in here, they're in trouble. They're trapped in here with us. We're not trapped in here with them. Yeah, no. <laughs> It'll be the biggest mistake they ever it made. It would be, but I don't want to get in that situation. That's true. Look how pretty that bottle is. Oh my gosh. That's a killer. Oh, it feels real good. You can stay there and do that the whole time I'm running. <laughs> feels good. We need two more likes. Night bottle bug. Take her easy, See bud. See you, Kevin, brother. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Definitely watch for tomorrow's video. It's going to be insane. One of our best. Nice wind machine at Walmart, Holly Lavin says. All right. That's Thank what's you. up. Yeah, thanks, Holly. For sure. We'll, we'll check it out. You see it's like smacked into the side of the wall once we turn yeah. it <laughs> 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 Daryl says 60. Daryl knows what's up. This is a beautiful lockport. This is a killer bottle, guys. 
Daryl wants it for his for himself, all for himself. And it's 62 or more. I don't blame him. It is wicked looking. What's that? Your fourth? Mm hmm. Oh, we got a big lag. Do we? Yeah. I already showed that. This one. For some reason, Christine is at 65. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. That was Christina Lacey at 65. 65 on the lock port. That is a sick bottle. It's so crude. Yeah, nice pickup, sister. Yeah, that's a good one. Next. <laughs> yeah. All right. Too. All right, guys. Oh, Daryl, that was late. It was late. Daryl threw a late hundo, hundo at it. Dang. Check it out, guys. We're going to run a historical, a hysterical, hysterical flask. And it has a donut lip. <clears throat> Check it out. Love the donut lip historicals. Is that There's bubbles in it. Oh, uh, yeah, probably Pittsburgh. Has some green right there in the neck. A little bit of green back there. You can see. A little green streak. Uh, no damage at all. This is actually the flask with the cannon and the American flag up here. Some cannonballs down here under the cannon to represent the Civil War. Um, it is a Union class pan on the other side. It isn't Pawnal, but it is for super crude, crazy crude lip on it. Stunning bottle. All right, let's do $150 start, $150 start on the class pan cannon flask with a donut finish. Wow, that thing's crazy looking spinning. It looks real good. Preston says 160. Let's start it. Clock is rolling. This is a killer flask, guys. One of my favorite embossings on a flask is the cannon and the American flag. I think it's really, really cool. Feed's getting choppy. It looks good, the time. Yeah, was, I'm looking at the screen. Yeah, it's if your feed's choppy, good. maybe restart it real quick. We're looking good on our end. Need 165 or more. 165 or more. Beautiful, beautiful Civil War era. Class panned with the cannon, cannonballs, and American flag on the back. Absolutely beautiful historical lag orny. We got a hundred likes. Do we? Yep. Nice. We have hit one hundred. So after my run, I'll do the giveaway tonight. Since you did the last couple. Alright. Look 
crazy amount of bubbles in this thing too. It's got bubbles all over it. The glass is just so crude and wavy. On lag, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And that was Preston McDaniel at 160. 160 on the cannon flask. Nice. nice. Beautiful pickup. Yeah, it is. That's a nice pickup on that, that donut lip. Right there. Oh, yeah. Wicked. And that was my five. Yeah. Trav's going to sit back down and sweat it out. <laughs> 160 Preston. Nice. Yeah, that's a gorgeous flash right there. Real nice pickup. All right, guys. Time for some more. Time for some more big hitters here coming up. Are you ready? <laughs> Check it out. Really, really, really nice light cobalt, almost a sapphire color. Sights and Brothers. Pony Blob out of Easton, PA. Real nice applied top. Got the big S on the back of it. It's got one teeny tiny open bubble right there. Actually, it's not even an open bubble. It's just a uh, spot where the embossing didn't adhere to the bottle as well. You can see it's a lot thinner right there. But no, that's just a uh, spot where the embossing is real thin. You can see the nice... Uh, Twist marks all in the neck of it. Real nice applied top there. There's the base of it. 1870s, 1880s. Sights and Brothers out of Easton, PA. Check that out, guys. In a sapphire blue. Really, really nice condition. Just some case wear. Let's start this one out at 150, guys. 150 start on the Cobalt Blue Sights and Brothers out of Easton, PA. 150. Christina Lacey's at 150. All right, the clock is going. Yeah, this is a gorgeous bottle, Tammy. Absolutely. 155 or higher. The, going next. the Hamilton, the Hamilton's coming up next, guys. I see only 82 people in the room. You better get your butts back in here. That's all I got to say to you. 155 or higher. Appreciate that rapid dog. Crystal Blue Persuasion. Yep, that's exactly right. Good song, too. Minute and 30 on the clock. Really nice. Almost sapphire blue. <coughs> Sights and Brothers out of Easton, PA. 1870s, 1880s. Blob top. Minute and 15 on the clock, guys. 155 or higher. One minute on the clock. We're running seven seconds lag now, so make sure you guys need to do a lag check real quick. If you're after this, 
Lag check, Josh. There you go, brother. Yeah, I would recommend doing a lag check, guys, because it's it's going to go quick at the end. Imagine a couple snipes is going to come in on this one. 35 seconds on the clock. 155 or higher. Lag check, Arnie. Thank you, brother. 25 seconds left, guys, on this gorgeous Cobalt Sights and Brothers out of Eastern Pennsylvania. Weather lag check. Thank you, Ray. 15 seconds, guys. Get your bids in. 155 or higher. 10 seconds left. Sapphire Blue Blob. Dustin's at 155. Need 160 or higher. We're on lag now. Here we go, guys. Daryl's at 200. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Christina Lacey at 210 on the snipe. Christina Lacey at 210 on the snipe. That's a beautiful bottle right there, sister lady. Heck yeah. Wait a bit, wait a bit, guys. Sights. That is a nice block. It is so hot in here. <laughs> it's killing me. Help. One, yeah, that was a nice one, Christina. If you guys think that was a nice one, though, check this one out. Oh, my gosh. This is a half pint, guys. Look at it in my hand. Just barely, just barely fits in my hand. Just a small little guy. Half pint cornucopia flask. And check it out. Real nice open panel. Attic mint on this bad boy. No damage whatsoever. It shows okay with that small little light, but I want to hit it with the big light and try it real quick, guys. Let's hit it with the big light and see what we're looking like here. Go ahead and flip flip the main lights off here. Yep, Ray, it is open panel. We're going to see if we can capture the true color of this thing. Flip that other light off too for me. Unfortunately, it doesn't get covered up by the whole entire light. I don't think you can. You kind of see the colors on it like that. Though. I mean, I can do like this, I guess. Yeah, there you go. It's kind of like a uh, almost a citron yellowish green. It's got seed bubbles all throughout it. It is a uh, half pint. Half pint cornucopia historical flask, guys. All right, flip my lights back on for me. Yeah, make sure you guys are on live chat. Absolutely no damage on this. This is flawless. You guys go ahead. If you want to refresh, I'll give you a minute to refresh before I start this one. Go ahead and refresh. Do whatever you want to do. The start on this one, start on this one is going to be 175. 175 is the start on this half pint cornucopia historical. 1840s, 1850s open panel. This is Attic Mint, no damage, open panel, half pint. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Here we go, guys. I'm starting the timer. 
Two minutes is counting down. Need 180 or higher. 180 or higher. Heck yeah, Hunter. I love the low max hutches. I've got a few of them myself in my personal collection. Tammy, we need 180 or higher on this. 180 or higher. Half pint cornucopia historical flask, guys. Attic mint, no damage. Really nicely embossed. Dustin's at 190. Need 195 or higher. Got a minute and 20 on the clock, guys. I'm going to use my smaller flashlight and hit it from the other side for a second for you. There you go. Seed bubbles galore in this one. Really, really nice. Half pint cornucopia flask. No damage. Attic mint. Real nice embossing. Just under a minute left to go. Open Pawnal 1840s, 1850s. Show you the uh, money shot one last time there, guys. Check that out. Sweet, sweet open panel. 30 seconds left on the clock. That's all right, Tammy. No problem at all. 195 or higher, guys. 15 seconds left. Adam, I did a glow show at the beginning, brothers. Too late now in the game. Get your bids in, guys. 195 or higher. We're on lag now. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Dustin Perry, you got it at 175, brother. Charles, your 210 was out, bro. Dustin Perry at 175 on that incredible half point historical. What a pickup on that. You guys missed out on that big time. Nice pickup on that, Dustin. Incredible bottle right there. All right, let's run another flask. Check this one out, guys. This is a small little half pint. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Our lag's running super fast, so it's got to be your guys' system. We're only running seven seconds lag now. Half pint, happy, or Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. It's got a wreath going around it. Nice double collar, blown in mold. Around 1890s on this one. Light SCA in color. No damage at all. We'll hit it with the black light real quick. There you go. You can see it lights up a real nice green, light green color. Half pint, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year flask, guys. We're going to go with a $50 start. $50 start on this one. Um, Dustin Perry did. $50 start. No damage. Where are we at here? Jerry Morgan's going to start us at 50. Thank you, sister lady. Here we go, guys. We need 52 or higher. 52 or higher. On the half pint, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year flask. No damage. 
Yeah, we've only buffered one time since we started. The the feed is running real good on our end, guys. Tattoo Steve's at 60. Thank you, brother. Need 62 or higher. Yeah, yeah, the, the Hamilton uh, Croc is running next on uh, Corey's next run. The Hamilton Croc is coming, so if you guys are wanting to, to bid on that, make sure you get in the room. It's coming up. One minute and ten seconds on the Merry Christmas and Happy New Year flask. Need 62 or higher. One minute on the clock. No damage. Real nice embossing in the slug plate. Lag Steve Dungan. Thank you, brother. 1890s. Blown in mold. Double collar. Nice little flask. Nice little holiday flask. 40 seconds on the clock. 62 or higher. 35 seconds to go, guys. Twenty seconds on the clock. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Half pint. No damage. Sherry Morgan's at seventy-two. Thank you, sister lady. Seventy-four or higher, and we're on lag now, guys. Seventy-five with Liz. Five, four, three, two, one. Zero! Sherry Morgan on the snipe at 79. Sherry Morgan on the snipe at 79. Christina, your 80 was out by a little over a second. Nice pickup on that, Sherry, sister lady. Yeah, Sherry out of nowhere. All right, guys, check this flask out. This is a J and E Mahoney Distillers. Had a Portsmouth, Alexandria, and Norfolk, Virginia. Check out the uh, rainbow patina on this, guys. It is blown in mold. You can see the mold line stops right there. Sherry says she's been waiting for that one all night. This is from the BR. G Company, the BRG Company. You can see it's got the same rainbow patina on the back side. Just a sweet, sweet little whiskey bottle here. J and E Mahoney Distillers. Around 1890s to 1905 on this one. No damage. It's got really nice patina on it. Start this one out at $12. $12 start on the J&E Mahoney whiskey flask. No damage. Oh, it, it, it absolutely glows 100%. We're at 20. I'm starting the clock. And we're going to hit it with a little glow thing real quick. Check it out. Oh, yeah. We need 21 or higher currently, guys. You can see it's got a real nice green glow to it, even with all the rainbow stuff all over it. No, the, the, uh, the, the pumpkin seed hadn't been ran yet, Steve, brother. You're good. I'm actually going to be running it after this one. But check it out, J and E Mahoney Distillers, Portsmouth. You just ran it, didn't you? What? The Christmas pumpkin seed. Oh, is that the one he was talking about? Oh yeah, I did, Steve. I did run that, brother. You did miss that. Sherry Morgan got that one for seventy nine. Yeah, I believe, um, Corey, are you running the sheaf of grain calabash tonight? 
the sheaf of wheat? Yeah. Yeah, he is running that tonight. Yep. Steve oh, man. Sorry about that, Steve, brother. I feel for you. 40 seconds on the clock. I'll try to get my hands on another one. 35 seconds on the clock, guys. J and E Mahoney Distillers out of Portsmouth, Alexandria, and Norfolk, Virginia. 31 or higher. No damage. 1890s. Really nice patina on it. 15 seconds on the clock. We're on lag now, guys. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one, zero. $30 to Arnie. Arnie at $30. Nice pickup on that, brother, man. It's a sweet, sweet bottle right there. All right. My fifth one is gonna be this sweet, sweet little uh, pocket flask. And it's a really nice light amethyst color. Would have had a uh, label right here on this piece. But look at the bubble. It looked, I call these tornado bubbles. You can see like the tip of it right here. It runs all the way to the top right there. And it's got like a funnel cloud look to it. Doesn't that look like a, like a funnel coming down out of there? Really, really light, light amethyst in color. This one's got a C on the base of it there. Nice blown in mold early. There's where the mold line stops right there. The rest of it's all tooled by hand. Kind of is crown royalish. But uh, this is actually 1880s, 1890s on this, on this one, guys. Shoe fly flask. Yeah, that's what it is. Shoe fly flask. What, now watch when I hit this thing with the uh, black light. Check out the green on that. Oh my gosh, guys. This thing lights up a bright, bright, bright neon green almost with the black light hitting it. Looks like a Dr. Steger from Illinois. But you can see it's kind of got like a... Uh, checkerboard pattern kind of on it it does look like a booger tattoo steve says 50. we're gonna go ahead and start the timer for you brother go ahead and give you a little glow show look how purple this one is guys this is all natural sca 1880s 1890s christina lacy's at 75. shoe fly flask needs 77 or higher no damage This is a little half pint. And the clock is running. Tattoos at 77. Thank you, brother. Need 79 or higher. Christina Lacey's at 89. Thank you, sister lady. Need 91 or higher. Minute and 15 on the clock. Beautiful light amethyst shoe fly flask. We got Tattoo Steve at 91. Thank you, brother. 93 or higher. Just under a minute left to go, guys. On the half pint purple shoe fly flask. Appreciate that, Lee. This is a really, really awesome colored bottle. No damage. With the tornado bubble, I call it. 40 seconds on the clock. I'm going to flip the light back on for you. Holly Lavin's at 100. Thank you, sister lady. Need 105 or higher. Twenty seconds on the clock. 
105 or higher. Christina Lacey's at 115. Thank you, sister lady. 120 or higher. On the 1890s, 1880s, 1890s shoe fly flask. In a light SCA color. We're on lag now, guys. Need 120 or higher. Five, four, three, two, one. Zero. Christina Lacey, you got that at 115, sister lady. Beautiful, beautiful little flask. Heck yeah. Christina's still throwing bids out. She said, that's mine, 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 mine. All right, what are we going to do for the giveaway bottle? Hmm. Hmm. Hold on one second, guys. I'm going to go ahead and do the giveaway. Before Corey runs the crop, we're going to do the giveaway. Hold on, I'll be right back. Right back with you. Do it. We're going to do a local milk, guys, that I actually just dug in the last video. This is out of the last video. It is a real nice milk bottle that we're going to do for our giveaway. Corey, write down a number from right now we're at 93 people, so we're going to do 1 to 93. Check it out. Jonathan Turner, that is actually one person doing the thumbs downs. And after eBay realizes it's all the same IP address, they remove them. So not worried about it in the least little bit. Check it out, though, guys. A one-quart Llewellyn Brothers out of Midland, Maryland. Big dog. Local to us, local to me and Corey. Cleaned up super nice. You saw this. Pulled live in the last video. Got the big L on the base of it and a smaller L right there. And then a 33. Yeah, 33. So check that out. Yeah, don't worry about the thumbs downs, guys. That's that's literally one person. It is a uh, real nice light SCA color. I don't even, you gotta whisper it to me. Hold on a second, guys. Yeah, hard one for some reason. All right, so I'm gonna count down from five, and then you guys start guessing. We ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go. Need a number zero to ninety-two. Oh, yeah, I think it's going to get him bad. <laughs> Bids are flying in. I haven't seen it yet. They're jumping like crazy all over the place. I've seen a couple real close to it. Somebody almost hit it. Still going, guys. Still going. Still anybody's game at this moment. Who is it going to be? Who's going to be our winner tonight? Bids are flying in like crazy. <laughs> Still have not seen it hit. 
And the other one just missed it. <laughs> My mom's even in there throwing in. <laughs> oh, man. Got it. Got a winner. Oh, ceasefire, ceasefire, ceasefire. That was a good one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was Crystal K with the winning number of four. Check this out, guys. The winning number of four right here. Number four was the winning number. Oh, that was a good Let number. me go back and make sure that... Ceasefire, quit sending the bids in, guys. Let me go back and make sure there wasn't one before you. Crystal, but I'm pretty sure Crystal K was the first one to get it at four. I'm scrolling up, scrolling up. That's an easy one to see too. No, I didn't hear nothing. What was it? For real? Yeah, like they have a little smaller. Dang. <laughs> I don't know what that was, brother. Still going. Dang, that was a good number, Corey. <laughs> it took him a minute to figure that out. Yeah, nobody else. Crystal K. Crystal K, congratulations on winning that beautiful milk bottle. Yeah, Barry, your four was after Crystal K. That was the first one we had. Crystal K, I need you to email that top email right there, travis.wyant31 at gmail.com. I need you to email me your mailing address, please. That is all I need, and then we'll get your bottle shipped right out to you. Congratulations on that beautiful, beautiful milk. If you would, just send your uh, mailing address over to me. Really appreciate everybody. That went to Arnie at $30. All right, guys, now it's time for the Hamilton Crock. Woo! All right, I'm getting up and letting Corey take over. Really appreciate all you guys. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. All right. This is actually going to be full of epic runs. What's up, Dutch? Mike, what's up, brother? <laughs> Long time no see. All right. So, I know you guys have all been waiting to see this bad boy. It is beautiful. And it's really hard to let this thing go. Look how small, look at it. It's just a wee crock. Just a wee guy. My hand's bigger than it is. Um, it is a, I'm guessing that stands for Jason Hamilton and Company from Greensboro, PA. Has some fancy on there here and there, nice blue stenciling. Um, it's in absolutely superb condition. See, even the wax seal, a lot of the time will have like a little chip in it and, uh, has a little manufacturing, like a bubble right there that had burst in the glaze, and that's all. It's not a chip or anything. It's like a glaze burst. Um, I've had so many offers on this crock already that it's unbelievable. I actually went like a whole week straight where people were messaging me multiple times a day wanting to know if I was going to sell this. I guess because of the size of it, it's pretty hard to find. Um... Go ahead and start out four hundred dollars, guys. Four hundred dollars start on the Hamilton. Hard to find size. A lot of people ain't even seen the Ann Company version. Uh uh. 
It's, uh, Holly says 400. Start the clock. Doug by yours truly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Doug in Cumberland too, Holly. This will be in tomorrow's That's video, good. guys. I'll tell you what, Holly, it was Doug on... Uh, Oh, I don't even want to say it on here. I'm not even going to tell you what street. Whenever Kim meets you, she can tell you what street it was dug on if you get it. It was and then Cumberland. It'll yeah. be that much more interesting, I guess. Because then you'll know where it was dug. Tomorrow's video, guys. You're going to see some epic stuff come out of the ground. Need 420 or more, 420 or more. Sherry, this croc was probably at a depth of 12 foot. 12 foot. This, was, this one was probably 12 foot down in the 15 foot outhouse. It was in that thick lime layer. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was in a super thick lime layer. We actually went through a lime layer that was like two and a half foot deep. It was incredible. <laughs> Have a good night, Arnie. Is this the first croc ever ran on here, other than a mini jug? Yeah. yeah, it is. This is our first croc. Yeah, yeah. Holy says someone's going to beat 500 to get this off of her. Dang, she says, nope, it's mine and nobody's getting it. <whistles> We're on lag time. Four, three, two, one, zero. All right, so since David David had a bid come in, I guess David had a 425 bid come in. And I guess I guess he didn't see Holly's 500. So, yeah, I guess it's 500. Holly got, Holly got it for 500. Heck yeah, sister lady. That is a sweet piece of history right there. It's an awesome crop. In tomorrow's video, yeah, it is. Very, very hard to find. I'm just gonna put it so so I'll tell you is I've had about I had about 25 offers on this croc I'm not even kidding you and I had to tell everybody I was like oh, I gotta run it in the auction I already said I would it's too late all right so, so if I say I'm gonna run something in the auction it's gonna have to be ran in the auction I, I've like I just got to I feel bad for telling some people I can't sell it to them but can't do it I'm gonna save it for you guys. All right, next. I think Steve was asking about the, uh, yeah, nice buy, Holly. That's awesome. Um, Steve was asking about the sheave of wheat flask here with the uh, wreath draped over it. Um, it's got a pitchfork and a rake crossed on the opposite side it has a star and you can see where it had a glass works in this ribbon right here that's embossed there but they peened it out you can see it all peened out up through there going I don't know what it was possibly Pittsburgh I don't know but it is open pawn beautiful beautiful um calabash you can see plied lip it's got a lot of crudeness to it that is not cracks that's just drips like an over drip in the lip absolutely stunning beautiful flask How crude that neck is <clears throat> Um, on this one, we're going to do a, let's do a one, 
135 start. 135 start on this one. Awesome looking calabash. Sheep of wheat. Tattoo says 135. Let's start the clock. This is a stunner too, guys. This is a really nice bottle. Um, the sheep of wheat's a lot harder to find than the uh, class pan in the Jenny Lind version. Um, this would have had a glass works on it, but like I said, it's been peened out. So if the glass works would still be on it, it'd be a really nice bottle. Um, I actually like the peened out stuff. It gives it character. Um, you can just see that it, the bottle's been through different hands through time. Different companies have probably used it. And uh, that's why they would have peened all that out. Who knows what they were up to. Sneaky. Really nice embossed star on it though. I like this bottle. Trav's got the uh, sheave of wheat double embossed flask. Yeah, I saw that Harrisburg, David. That thing is nice. Really, really nice bottle. Um... Harrisburg, Harrisburg looks like a promising dig spot. I'm sure it's been hit just like every other place. But Steve says one fifth. No, Steve's up. Wait a minute, what's happening here? Preston's one forty. Then Steve's at. All right, Steve's at. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> oh, Preston and Steve are going at it. I said, all right, we're, we're at 170 with Steve. He said, John's at 185. Two, one, zero. Yeah, that was John. Old yep. throw? Yep. Nice. 185. Nice. Yeah, nice buy. That's a nice bottle. Heck yeah, it is. Very nice. <laughs> Holy. Oh my gosh, I've been sweating ever thinking about selling it. What, the jug? That croc. Oh yeah. I completely forgot to bring mine. I was going to show them to Preston it. says you don't have that one. He wanted that one. With that Calabash? Yeah. Well, yeah. here's one about a bunch of these don't have. Oh, yeah. All right. Check this guy out. This is, I'm pretty sure this is a Travis bottle. <laughs> That's a Chapman? Yeah, pretty sure it is. It just don't say it, so I was yeah, like... Like yeah, it is. It's a but this is called a banjo dancer. It's got a person dancing on a, a log wood floor, and he's got some. I don't know. He looks like he's smoking something or something's going on. But uh, then you got a guy sitting on a bench with a little. You can see right here a wine jug or a uh, a uh, pitcher on this side and a bucket on this side. Sitting on a bench playing a banjo, and this is a Baltimore historical. Yeah, yours is a, a soldier dance, soldier, yeah, soldier dancer, isn't it? Drummer, soldier or drummer dancer? Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, drummer yeah. Dancer. 
but you can see it's a snap. It is a early told, probably late 70s on this one. Uh, it's a pretty decently hard to find Baltimore flask. I don't know the historical, the uh, number of the flask or the code, but really, really nice flask. Um, you probably won't ever see us run another one of these. Uh, I debated on keeping this bottle and putting it in my personal collection, but I'm going to go ahead and run it for you. Um, let's do a $180 start on the Baltimore uh, Banjo Dancer Flask. Hundred and eighty start on the banjo dancer out of Baltimore. It is a pint to pint flask. So it would have said Dietsville on that on that uh, ribbon if it wouldn't have been peened. John says 180. Let's start the clock. Clock is rolling. Yeah, it is. It's a nice one. Really, really nice flask. Not easy to get your hands on either. Old seam size. Banjo Dancer. Need 185 or more. 185 or more on the Baltimore Banjo Dancer Flask. Sheets and Duffy. On the Banjo Dancer? On the calabash. <clears throat> it'd have been nice if the glass, it'd have been real cool if the glass works would have still been on it. But I know people that love peen stuff. There's people that collect just peened out stuff. <whistles> on lag. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. And that was John again at 180. 180 on the Banjo Dancer. Really nice flask. Nice, John. That thing's awesome. Oh, we're about to handle the Banjo Dancer. <laughs> banjo Dancer. Yeah, get him. All right. Are you right. done buffering? Yeah, done buffering. Ah, yes. uh, maybe. It's spinning? Yeah, it's spinning. All right, next. Look at this. Look how bright this one is. Check that oh, guy out. That it? it looks pretty good on there. Yeah, it does. 
really, really nice. So whoever it was that didn't get that on the last go, you're going to get another chance at one. This one's, however, a pint. A little different color. Um, absolutely beautiful. Really, really bright one here. Uh, it is open panel. As you can see, there's the OP. Look at the base wear on this. This is, like, you all, you already know, guys, this is one of my favorite parts about an old bottle is the base wear. It just shows how long the thing's been around, how many hands it's been through. Back in the 1820s, 1830s, when these flasks were blown, they were reused over and over and over again in families. And, I mean, they could have drank whiskey out of it in the beginning, put other things in it afterwards, you know, used it as water bottle or whatever but look at the base wear i mean it's just crazy crazy base wear on this so much character um yeah really nice color flask uh let's start this one out at 185 185 dollar start on this one Beautiful cornucopia, really bright color on this one. Oh yeah, you can even you can even see the brighter color in the frame. You can see right through mm -hmm. that thing. Yeah, it looks That's nice. That's a nice one, yeah. Real nice. Super nice cornucopia. You can see what it looks like in the pitch black. Yeah. Trav's gonna turn the lights out to see what it looks like pitch black. <laughs> nothing. Well, Looks like nothing. It might not work. <laughs> Being at one point, it might cover the light up better. Uh, I don't think. I don't think you can. No. Uh. -uh. It does look pretty cool, but when it flashes around to this side, it shines everybody. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> all right, we're turning the lights back Yeah, on. all right, we're turning the lights back on, guys. <laughs> I'll try it for you. Yeah. Those cornucopias, they just don't block that light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is a bright one, though. Big base bottles. Real, real yeah, bright nice cornucopia one. on here. Hundred and eighty five start. One eighty five start on the open panel cornucopia. Really nice color. Eighteen twenties, eighteen thirties. This bottle's pretty much two hundred years old. That's crazy. One eighty five start. I'm gonna give it five seconds and I'll pull it. Actually, I'll tell you what. Daryl says 185. Starting the clock. I think Daryl's got it. I think I think it's I think he's got it. I know his bid's coming late, so I was I was waiting just to make sure. Need 190 or more on the cornucopia. This is a nice one, guys. Some of the brighter, the brighter the color, the uh, higher they sell for. Just like with uh, puce colors. Puce, for example. If you have a real dark puce, you can't really see through the bottle. They normally don't bring as much money. 
and uh, when it's more of a pink puce, you can see through it better, it's more transparent, they can bring tons of money. Um, and as some of you know, one of my things is puce hair bottles, I love them, something, something for puce hair bottles, any kind of off-colored, even like an apricot puce or anything in a hair bottle, I love it, I want them all. Harvesting cicadas. <coughs> oh, you could dry them things out and eat them, and they'd be a great protein source. I'll guarantee it. When I was in Mexico, they got dried bugs. Steve's at 190, they got dried bugs in Mexico. They're, like, flavored. Man, like, they, they ain't that bad. And you, you got to figure, they probably last forever. You put, they put, uh, they put crickets and grasshoppers and, and, uh, all kinds of stuff on like their tacos and stuff. They bring them out as like sides, scorpions and stuff, and they're like dried. And man, they're they're actually pretty good. D depending if they if they got spicy stuff on them and it's so hot that you can't even eat it, that's just too much. But it's different. It's definitely a different culture. Really cool though. <coughs> on lag time. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. That was Steve Dungan at 190. 190. Nice. That's a nice flask, Steve. Heck yeah. And I got one more. One more. All right, we just got through the super heavy hitters on my end. Um, I'm going to run another five bottles after Trav's next run, and I'm going to call it a night. I'm going I'm to finish at 30. But Same. here's going to be, Trav says he's going to run another five too. But here, here's a nice squat. Um, this is a Geo, what is it, a Piper? Yeah, I'll run 10. Geo, 10 more? Yeah. All right. Trav says he's going to run 10 more. There's a Geo Piper Jr. from Camden, New Jersey. Check it out. Look how weird the neck is on this thing. It just don't even look right. It's just strange looking. Like a globby, crooked neck. Geo Piper. This is a tougher one to get. Um, started out at... Let's start this one out at $35. $35 start on the Geo Piper. Eighteen seventy squat soda with a weird stretched out neck. Daryl's at 35. Let's start the clock. Need 36 or more on the Geo Piper. George. George Piper. Mr. George. Mr. George Piper. <laughs> <laughs> it don't sound. It don't sound British. I think it does. Is Piper British? Probably not. I think it's Piper. Pfeiffer. It probably is pronounced Pfeiffer, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. There could be some silent letters in there going on. <laughs> I might I might have a heat yeah. stroke. <laughs> what is it? Oh, it's sweat beads everywhere. <laughs> Terrible is it? 50, need 52, 52 or more on the, we're not too sure if it's Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer. How about a 50 Pfeiffer? <laughs> 50 Pfeiffer. Oh, I'm sweating. They're fine, I suppose, here in the morning. <laughs> 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 
Gail, we forgot to turn the, uh, we kept it, we kept the heat on real low. So when we come down here for auctions, it wouldn't be so cold. Because we kept having these, like, up here in the mountains, it'll be super cold at night, the beginning of, like, spring and summer. And, uh, so you gotta, you kinda gotta keep the heat on. Lag check. No. My bad. Oh, sorry about that, homie G. No, me and Trav's like having a heat stroke in here. We're <laughs> not paying attention. My bad. We're on lag time. Three, two, one, zero. Nice, Daryl. That was Daryl at 50. Daryl got the Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer, whatever it is, at $50. But uh, yeah, we we keep we keep the heat on just a tiny bit. But it was like almost 90 degrees here today, so we forgot to turn the heat off. So now, whenever Trap got here, he turned it off. But it's still like super cracking in here, and it's just whew. It won't air out. Is that five? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna run 10 more, so I'm gonna run five. Corey's gonna run five. And then I'll sit down and finish with my five. All right. Next bottle up, guys, is a really nice blob soda. This is a William Nice. William Nice out of Doylestown, Doylestown, PA. Very nice. Very nice. Check it out. It's got some sweet, sweet, long, long bubbles going all throughout it. Bubbles all throughout it. Real nice bubble there. Nice blob top. No damage at all. It's got a 1466 or 99, whichever way it is, it's backwards double stamp it is hard to find very nice very william nice out of doylestown pa check that out guys attic mint it is attic mint 1880s 1880s william nice let's go with 35 dollars start guys $35 start on the William Nice blob. The back of it says this bottle not to be sold. Doylestown, PA. $35 start. Attic Mint. 35 homie G. 35 brother. This is a sweet bottle and it's not really easy to get your hands on. 35 and a lag check, homie G. Thank you, brother. Clock is a rolling, guys. We need 36 or higher. 36 or higher. William Nice. Or Nice, however you want to say it. Out of Doylestown, PA. <coughs> this is a really, really nice ice blue. Glacier blue color, no damage. It's got some sweet bubbles running through the neck of it. Minute 25 on the clock. Oh, I really, I really wanted that. Yeah, blobs are really, really cool. Let me give you a kind of like a little dark. Glow show real I quick. Did want, I did want to meet Dana. I did. I did. Well, we're going back in July, so hopefully we'll meet the other people that we did not get a chance to yeah. this time. But even with Shoops Grove, we had, I think, 110 people tonight. So really appreciate everybody and definitely all your participation, your support of the channel and the auctions.
that means a lot to us, guys. Yeah, the glass is really super clean. Attic mint, guys, no damage. No kind of blemishes or anything on this bottle. Really sharp, bold embossing on the slug plate. Really, really nice example here. I'm gonna flip the light back on. We're at 15 seconds. Need 36 or higher. 36 or higher. William Nice, Doylestown, PA. We're on lag now, guys. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Homie G, you got that all alone, brother, at 35. Dang. That was a heck of a nice pickup. <laughs> <laughs> Homie G at 35. Did he bit himself up? No, I started it at 35, so he didn't bit himself up. Check it out, guys. Dr. Daniels Oster Caucus Nerve and Muscle Liniment. Rheumatism, neuralgia, and lameness. Oh, <laughs> this is a great embossed bottle. It's got the uh, three... I, I, I measurement on there. It is blown in mold. <laughs> Around 1890s, 1905, light SCA in color. One more time. Dr. Daniels, Oster, Caucus, Nerve, and Muscle Liniment. Rheumatism, neuralgia, and lameness. Gosh, that's lame. <laughs> no damage at all. It is freaking so hot in here. <laughs> Let's go with a $15 start. $15 start. Woo! On the Dr. Daniels. The medicine for being lame, guys. Would it be an insult to yourself if you took that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any idea, man. But it's great. It's a great bottle. Homie G's at 15. Thank you, brother. Need 16 or higher. I will hit this with the black light because I know it uh it will glow for sure. Check it out. Check it out. Real nice green. Charles, you out of here, brother man. Alright, you have a great night. Well, what's left of it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And yeah, definitely new video out tomorrow, guys. It's going to be a banger. Lots of footage, too. Lots of footage. It should be a real good one. One minute and 20 seconds on the clock. Need 16 or higher. Dr. Daniels, Oster Caucus. Nerve and muscle liniment, rheumatism, neuralgia, and lameness. Get it, get it. Yeah, I know. I love that glowing glass too, homie G. Just under a minute left, guys. 16 or higher. Yeah, the Vaseline glass is nice. This is not Vaseline glass. This is much earlier than Vaseline glass. 40 seconds on the clock. Thirty seconds left on the clock. <laughs> yeah, you would tattoo, brother. It says Dr. Daniels, Oster, Caucus, Nerve, and Muscle Liniment. Rheumatism, neuralgia, and lameness. Sweet bottle. 15 seconds to get it, too, guys. 16 or higher. Lag check, homie G. Mr. Dale's at 16, 17 or higher, guys. Here we go. We're on lag now. <laughs> Gail's at 20. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. 
Gail Copinger at $20. Gail Copinger at $20. Nice pickup on that, brother. Man. $20. Dr. Daniels. One second, I gotta flip my my paper over here. All right, <clears throat> bottle number twenty-eight is a Red Heart Manufacturing and Medicine Company out of Camden, New Jersey, USA. Check it out. Real nice, blown in mold. 1890s, 1905. Light SCA in color. Red Heart Manufacturing and Medicine Company. Nice embossed tube medicine right here. We're going to go with an $8 start. $8 start on the Red Heart. Corey found some more bottles. Nice. Red Heart Manufacturing Company, guys. Out of Camden, New Jersey. $8 start. Corey Docks at 8 Thank you, brother. Clock is a rolling. $9 or higher. Blown in mold tube medicine. No damage. Got some parfaits. Yeah, there you go. I don't know, I guess. Yeah, I'll take one or two. I will too. I'll, I'll take a parfait. I might have one. Minute and 40 on the clock. Red Heart Manufacturing and Medicine Company out of Camden, New Jersey, USA. <laughs> oh, I. I don't know about any, probably not, probably not no Marvel combos tonight, guys. Not tonight, Wednesday though, for sure. I've already got my setup for tonight. Minute and 10 seconds on the clock. But you know what? I'll throw one in on this one. Let me, let me see what I can pull out of here real quick for you. Okay. 50 seconds left on the clock. And let's throw this one in here. Let's throw this Vitro Agate in. It's got some nice red and aqua. Yeah, there you go. There's your combo. There's your combo. 30 seconds on the clock. $9 or higher. Nine dollars or higher. We're on lag time now, guys. Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one, zero. Eight dollars. I even added a marble to it. Corey Doc still got it for eight dollars. Nice, brother. Nice pickup on that. Nice marble too. I threw in one of one of my good looking ones for you. Next up, check this out, guys. Really nice, uh, perfume bottle, I believe it is. Some kind of a perfume. Light SCA in color, smooth base, but check it out. No damage. 
It's got a little bit of uh, frosted down here, a frosted part of it. Really, really nice early perfume bottle. Probably 1880s, 1890s on this one. How about $10 start? $10 start on the frosted. I don't know if it's crystal or, or what exactly kind of glass it is, but it's a beautiful 1880s, 1890s perfume. $10 start. Nobody's interested in this beautiful perfume bottle. Hey, there you go. Gunner's out, or Gunner's in at 10. It absolutely glows, homie G, for sure. I'm calling that one. Oh, yeah, check it out. Not really, really bright, but it definitely glows. Definitely glows. Need $11 or higher on the 1880s, 1890s perfume bottle. $11 or higher. Minute and 30 seconds on the clock. Minute and 10 on the clock. Tattoo Steve's at 11. Thank you, brother. You need $12 or higher. $12 or higher, guys. One minute left on the 1880s perfume bottle. Yeah, homie G, if it's earlier than like 1913, I think it is, somewhere around there. And you put a black light to it, the manganese in the glass reacts with the black light and uh, it makes a green glow. If it's after 1913, somewhere around there, then it will not react to the black light. 20 seconds on the clock. Need $12 or higher. Is it cool enough out there, Tr Corey? Yeah. We're on lag time now, guys. Yeah, Rose would look real pretty in there. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Tattoo Steve at $11. Yes, sir. Nice pickup on that, brother, man. That's a nice early perfume. Gunner, your 12 was out. By a little over a second. Had Tattoo Steve at 11 bucks. Alright guys, next up. Check it out. I have a really nice combo set here. Yeah, I have a really nice combo set here. I got a little bowl. A little serving bowl. These possibly were made in Baltimore, not 100 on them. The little serving bowl does have a chip right there on the rim on the outside, but you can't tell from the top part of it. Real nice, dark uh, brown glaze. The base on the little mug does say something, but I can't, I can't make it out, altar or something like that, not sure. But it's a little uh, cream, little creamer. Got the pour spout. Got the handle. It's really early. It is early. Probably, probably 1870s. Yeah, it might be so 60s, 
pitcher basin. Old throw says it's called a pitcher basin. Well, there you go, guys. There, there's the uh, the set, the pitcher basin set. In really good shape for as old as it is, 1860s, 1870s. Let's go to $15 start. $15 start. I have no idea. Is it a type of mocha wear, John? Do you know, brother? We definitely dug pieces like it out of Civil War pits. We have dug pieces, never anything full like that. Bobby J is going to start us at 15. All right, we're going to start the clock. Clock is running, guys. Need 16 or higher. 16 or higher. All right, homie G, brother. You have a great night at work. Don't work too hard and uh, have, a, have a good weekend after that, too. He's going to work now? Yeah. Ooh. It has to be a black light, Margaret. It does have to be a black light to make them glow like that. Old throw thanks 1850s, 1860s. <laughs> nice, John. Appreciate that, brother. You hear that, guys? So... Civil War time frame on this one, 1850s, 1860s. Glazed pitcher basin. One minute on the clock. Need 16 or higher. 16 or higher on the set. The little creamer jug and the basin itself. 1850s, 1860s. 40 seconds left on the clock. Little bug in there. 16 feet. or higher. Yes, he had a dumb little bug flying around. It's long enough. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it could make a dog shoot. <laughs> 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 What's this one, dude? Gunner's at 18. Some Need 19 <laughs> or higher. That one went. For twenty to Gail Copinger. Nineteen or higher, guys, on the Civil War little creamer jar pitcher basin. We're on lag now. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Jeff Boffman at twenty-two. Oh, Bobby J, your 25 was out by less than a millisecond, brother. Jeff Boffman got that one at $22. Nice pickup on that. Real nice. I thought that would go, go a little bit more than that. Really nice pickup. All right, guys, that was 30 for me. I'm going to switch off with Corey. I'll see you back after five. Yeah, that was a really nice, real nice pickup. For what? 20, what is it? How much? 20 what? 22. 22. Did you get the rest of them? Mm -hmm. All right, nice. Yep. All right. For my last five, I'm going to start off with hmm, I guess I'm going to start off with this early clear glass um, 
unknown glass makers mark whiskey came out of a 1860s 1870s pit you can see it is applied really strange strange looking whiskey bottle real nice and crude um like i said before glass that's this early in whiskeys isn't normally clear and it is a ss and company and uh, when you look it up in the glass makers book it isn't there so nothing's been documented on this glass house um it was dug locally could be something out of baltimore i'm not too sure I have no clue uh really nice bottle though it's big it's really hard to fit it in the screen um since the glass mate the glass house is unknown mark Let's start, let's start out at $45, $45 start on the clear 18, I'm going to say it's 1870s, 1870s whiskey, SS and Company. $45 start. Unknown bottling house. Tattoos at 45. Let's start the clock. Another thing that's interesting about this is the glass at the uh in the bottle is different than the glass that they use to make the uh finish it's a whole different texture it looks different it's really strange Need 46 or more, 46 or more on the clear unknown glass house. Tall whiskey. This thing's, I think it's taller than the patent I'm about ready to run. I don't know though, they might be about the same. The next whiskey I'm going to run is actually my favorite ones to collect. And I don't ever get rid of Aquas. Tattoo says if anybody wants it, they gotta pay 50. Pay more than fifty. <phone rings> On lag time, five, four, three, two, one, zero. That was Tattoo Steve at 45. 45 on the clear cylinder with the unknown glass mark. Nice. That was Privy Doug probably, I don't know, two and a half, three years ago. Out of a real nice early one in our hometown. Can't remember. There was another whiskey, the tall whiskey, that came out of that hole too. 
<clears throat> All right. So here is the whiskey bottles that I collect, the Patton. Patton whiskey. I love Patton whiskey cylinders. Um, what makes this one unique is you don't see them in aqua as often. It is a Whitney Glassworks, or yeah, Whitney Glassworks. And honestly, it, <laughs> it looks like it, it might have had some iron on it. I mean, it really, really, the texture and everything looks, gosh, it looks iron panel, but there's no iron on it. I don't know if it was iron panel and it set in the ground in some type of mineral and it took it off. But gosh, it resembles an iron panel, but I just don't see the iron. Uh, Whitney's Glass Works. Really nice early, probably... 1860s, early 1870s, aqua patent cylinder. Uh, really nice and crude. Big bubbles all in it. Right there is a little rough spot. It's really hard to see on the lip. That's really the only problem with it right there. Other than that, it's killer bottle. Um, let's start this one out at start this one out at forty five to forty five dollars start on the harder to find eighteen sixties eighteen seventies aqua patent whiskey Whitney's Glass House. Glass works. I just don't think there's anything that looks better than a color run of patent whiskeys on shelf. You can get them in Citron, you can get them in all kinds of different shades of colors and it's it's a really fun bottle to collect. Some of the crazier colors can bring a ton of money, just like any other bottle that's that comes pawned. $45 start tattoos at 45 This is a good bottle, guys. You don't see these aquas very often. Whitney's Glass House, embossed on the bottom. And it just so much looks like I'm pulling off. The iron's just not there. Yeah, I love the Patton whiskeys. So I don't know what it is. They're just simple. And they come in a ton of different colors, and they come iron panel. That's what gets me. A lot of the time, you dig these uh, whiskeys up out of the ground. Even if it's if it's not patent, it could be something else made, maybe Pittsburgh or Baltimore. If you pull that thing out and you turn it around, you see that red iron panel on it. Oh my gosh! And it seems like the patent whiskeys and your a lot of your cylinders have the best iron panels on them. Uh, to me, they do. That double eagle store I got from the board. That does yeah. have a nice pawn on it. Well, what make these? What makes these have the best iron pawns? Is they're big. They're 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 usually like monstrous, big, and they dip down in. They they're real sunken in. Like that one that I dealt with Mike in Piedmont. 
It don't. It's not like a, a patent or anything. It don't have a glass house on it. We think it's Pittsburgh, but the iron pawn one, it's like, gosh, it's like three inches, three inches in diameter, man, and it's red, straight red. On lag time, three, two, one, zero. That was Tattoo Steve at 45. Nice whiskey tattoo. Nice whiskey, man. Heck yeah. That's a good one, Steve. You're going to like it. Tough one to find, too. Man, look at that. Feel it. It just... <laughs> you think mineralization took it off? Look, it even has the... The, uh, them little holes where, like, uh, what the other, uh, iron pond sodas and stuff have. There's little vending holes down there. Mm. I don't know, it's, it's a tricky one. Alright, let's move on to a Johnson and Company from Philly. A really nice, clean one, too. And, uh... I think this one's a little bit earlier than uh, other ones that I've ran. Block letter J on the back. Tons of bubbles in it. All kinds of bubbles. Some goofy looking bubbles. Nice bottle. Um, let's start this one out at 30 $30 start on the uh, Johnson Eight, late 1860s early 1870s $30 start super clean on this one really nice color No damage. Dutch is at 30. Let's start the clock. Need 31 or more on the 1860s, 1870s, Johnson and Company, Philly. Thirty one or more. <clears throat> All right. Homie G at 50. Need 52. 52 or more. Fifty two or more. Really nice, uh, Johnson. On lag, four, three, two, one, zero. Homie G got that for fifty. Fifty dollars on. The Johnston and Company. Really nice, clean, bubbly squat.
All right. Next, I have yet another variant, different variant of the uh, Dr. Jane alternative 84. I can't see. I know what it is. <laughs> 84 Chester Street, Philadelphia. And it is snap case. 1860s. See real crude plied lip. Beautiful bottle. Nice Civil War era. Dr. Jane's Alternative. 84 Chester Street, Philly. Just missed Ponal. Um, still a $25 start. Has a little bit of black carbon up there uh, in the shoulder of it. You can see right there above the panel. $25 start on the Civil War era Dr. Jane's Alternative out of Philly. No damage. Nice decent sized meds too. I think they're I think they're seven inches tall. There it is. Yep, well, seven and a quarter. Dr. Jane's Alternative. Really nice early med. No takers on it. I'll pull it here in a second. Put something else up. And pulling it. No, no, three. Three, yeah. Alright, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this bottle back up. I'd already, I think I pulled this once. It's the, uh, what is it, C. Ambrosis and Company Bottlers out of Philly. And uh, there's no information on Hutch Book about it, so nobody's turned anything in on it. It is a taller Hutch. has a block letter A on the back. Bubbly as well. Um, no damage at all. Nice bottle. Just an extra piece of glass stuck to the bottom of it. It's actually kind of sharp. Kind of like stuck on the bottom, a little flat piece of glass. But, uh... Let's start it out at $45. $45 start on the C. Ambrosis. No info listed in Hutch Book. Nobody's turned in any information on this bottle. Super clean bottle, too. It's a nice looking one. Tall, longer neck hutch. It's an attractive hutch. It is. It's ambrosious. It is ambrosious.
Fall asleep. Forty five, Tammy. I got five more good ones coming up, guys. Don't go nowhere. Five more good ones coming up on my run. You know how we got to finish it with a bang? I always throw up some crazy crap at the end. Yeah. For the people that stood in the room. How about... Let's see here. I'm going to pull this one and put up another one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I'll put up another squat soda. This is another. John's, yeah, Johnston and Company from Philadelphia. Uh, this one's one of the ones with the Celtic looking J on the back. It has has some decent Benicia on it. You can see. Uh, pretty sure you shake copper in this one and get a little more dirt out of it. It is. 1870s has an early 1870s look to it possibly 1860s another one with a really nice color no damage at all in good condition um started out at start out thirty dollars thirty dollars start on the squat soda 1860s 1870s um Johnston and Company out of Philadelphia. Slightly different than the other one. Bigger embossing and a Celtic J instead of a block letter. Just regular block letter on the back. $30 start. Spice it up, gotta spice it. Here I'm gonna spice it up for you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add in this Doug Privy Doug uh, pot lid. Check that thing out. Hand painted. That's all hand painted. You can feel the strokes on it. Come out of a privy paint still on it beautiful little pot lid look at the flowers throwing that in here's another little like pot lid probably nipping little like Japanese birds or something on there I don't know what's going on <laughs> Throwing that one in, and then I have another painted, has some gold gilt on there. A little like pot lid thing. I think two of them come out of double diamond, and the third one come out of a privy. <coughs> really nice pot lids. Jar lids, something like that. Makeup, yeah, teapot lids, probably. Some sort. Uh, sugar jar lids. But, um, still $30 start. Get it all. You get it all.
Yeah, Holly, I'm sure that'd probably work. Holly said Tuesday. Mm-hmm, Tuesday's good. Yeah, Trav said that's good. $30 start on the squat soda and the teapot lids. Darn, spicing it up heavy, too. That's some pretty teapot lids. Probably around 1890s to 1915. The teapot lids and the soda, 1860s, 1870s. to spice it up again. <laughs> what else do I got? Hmm. Corey says 30. There we go. The clock even shut off. <laughs> Yeah. All right. I think Corey's going to get it, though. Need 31 or more. I'll tell you what. I'm going to throw this early Dr. Farney's out of Hagerstown, Maryland in. See the mold line goes all the way up under the neck. These are the earliest forneys me and Trav's ever dug. See the base is just straight smooth. These come out of 70s, 80s pits. But throw that in there too. Yeah, it's got like a little hand, like where a spoon went down in. Or something, or a tea bag, or something, I guess. Dr. Farney's teething syrup for babies added into the mix. Blue one's a mustard. I don't think we've dug any other pieces, well, big pieces like that. Three, two, one, zero. Bobby Johnson snuck in at the end and sniped it for 32. Got it all for 32. <laughs> That's a big old lot there. Dang, look at you. <laughs> I'm not gonna put a sticker on that. Yeah. Put it in a baggie. That was a nice bow. Nice yeah, it was. Bottle. Yeah, it was. Very nice. All right, for my last bottle of the night, I saved. I saved a pretty hard to find one. It is a a George. What? Sham Sham Lawful. What a name. George Sham Lawful. What in the world? Out of Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, this is a harder soda to find. A guy from uh, Philly actually told us that these are hard to come by. It is probably late Lawful 1870s. Who is he? I wonder if Sham Lawful happened to him. Probably.
I'd imagine. Look here, it's another one with peened out lettering. It says, oh, it says, I want to say F C O. No, that's and company peened out or something. Or just the mold was bad. Yeah, it's George Shomlawful and Company, Trent, New Jersey. And something didn't go right there. But uh, late 1870s, early 1880s, Pony. Really nice soda. Harder to find. Started out at $35. $35 start on the harder to find Trenton, New Jersey. Shawm Waffle. <laughs> Shawm Waffle happened to him. Jeez. Shawm Waffle's gonna have him lost if we keep staying in this room. <laughs> We're gonna faint. I feel like Sean Waffle might happen too. Really cool soda too. See where that strike didn't work out real good on the end company or they peened it out because it wasn't supposed to be there. I'm not too sure. It might be peened. Corey says he's hungry for a waffle now. <laughs> that's a that's a massive last name. I'd hate to have to write that all the time. Thirty-five dollar start on the Sham Lawful. Out of Trenton, New Jersey. Drop it down to 30, thirty dollar start, guys. Can't go any lower than that. The thirty dollar start on the Trenton Pony Blob. <laughs> the tip canoe broke Gail or she bid. Yeah, that's an expensive bottle. I love them. Mm hmm That's a that's a heavy hitter bottle. <clears throat> Gotta have them though. I don't blame you. I do it. I do it all the time. I'm always buying stuff and sometimes I buy stuff and think, Oh, I'm gonna end up reselling that and then it just stays in my personal collection forever. Yep. I'll, I'll walk past the shelf and look at it and can't do it. I bought a summer winter flask to sell tonight and I held it up in the light and it said, I'm going to stay in your collection. <laughs> so it did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You just got to, sometimes you got to keep them. I'm going to have to sweeten the deal again. Dang. Gosh, dang. Killing the world. You gotta get the keys, you lock it back up. Oh, man. I can't get it in there. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> damn, I'm gonna have to sweeten the deal again, guys. I don't know what to grab it. Is there anything negative here? Here we go. I'm going to throw in a Johan Hoff.
1890s, 1880s, 1890s. Let's throw them both in there. Johann Hoff Ale and the, uh, what is it? Shaman Laufer? Something. <laughs> I don't even remember what it is. I already forgot. Shaman Laufer. Something like that. $30 start. If you don't get $30 now, Sean Waffle might really happen. <laughs> Sherry says 30 Phew, I was afraid Sean Waffle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm sweating so bad. <laughs> I don't even think I spelled like this when I'm working out. Captain Dunn's is at 32. Need 33. Sherry's at 34. Yeah, th those are really neat. You know what, though? When, when you're digging... And uh, you come across the top of one of them in like an early or an earlier pit or a uh, dump, you always think it's something like a Townsend's or something like that sticking out. They always look like the top of a Townsend to me. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it ends up being one of them. But oh man, they're, they're still nice bottles though. I do like them. Need 35 or more. Captain's at 35, need 36. Starting to lose our minds. Hey. Four, three, two, one, zero. Sherry snuck it at 36. Nice. Snuck in right at the end at 36 on it. Nice, Sherry. That's it for me. Done. Done for the night. Stay here and help Trav finish up and. We got five more good ones to finish yeah, with, guys. Five more. Five, five more good ones. Five more good ones. You're going to like what I'm going to end with, too. All right. Five bottles left in tonight's auction. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out, participating. Hope you had a really good time tonight. First up, we have a preparations of Dr. Charles M. Wesley are prepared only by Dr. C.W. Maine. Whatever that means. <laughs> Out of Boston, Massachusetts. Very, very nice early. Blown in mold. 1880s, 1890s. And it's got a CGR and an 8 on the base of it. Real nice ice blue color. You can see all the uh, twist marks right here in the neck. Very nice early bottle. Whole, the whole front panel is embossed. No damage. Let's go with a $15 start, guys. 
$15 start. Invented by one and mixed by the other. Oh, okay, Corey Doc. Now that makes sense, brother. Pretty cool. Two hands on the uh, two hands in one, I guess. They wanted to acknowledge both the creator and the mixer. That's pretty neat. They must have been really good friends. Kind of like me and Corey Wellens. Fifteen dollars, guys. Fifteen dollar start. All right, we're going to throw in this uh, real nice sapphire blue shooter marble full of bubbles, no damage. Yeah, we're going to throw that in with it. Corey docks at 15. Clock is rolling. Here we go. $16 or higher. Sherry Morgan's at 16 Need 17 or higher. 17 or higher. Is Tammy Cooch just still with us tonight? I got a funny story to tell real quick if she is. She's not. I'll wait till next time. Minute and 30 seconds on the clock, guys. I have included a glacier blue or ice blue shooter marble bottle itself 1880s 1890s preparations of dr charles m wesley are prepared only by dr cw main out of boston massachusetts 17 or higher dr charles Need 17 or higher, guys. 35 seconds left on the clock. I'm going to have four more bottles to run after this one. Yes, she is. All right, you guys remember on Wednesday night how me and Corey was talking about SpongeBob. Oh, Tammy, she already told you. All right, well, I'm gonna tell everybody else. Anyway, me and Corey was talking about SpongeBob and the and the bully fish that uh, was gonna beat him up, and he was real scared. We're on lag now, guys. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, Sherry Morgan, you got that at sixteen dollars. Nice pickup on that sister lady. All right, so I'm going to continue the story. So anyway, we were talking about that, and uh, it ended up, we figured out it was a flounder, a big giant flounder that uh, had come as a new student. Was, Billy. Yeah, Billy the Flounder. He was going to beat up SpongeBob. So somehow we were talking about that right as Tammy won uh, one of the bottles, and I actually wrote down <laughs> Tammy Flounder <laughs> on the paper, guys. <laughs> <laughs> my wife says who's tammy flounder i had thought about it for a minute and i was like oh my gosh can't believe i did that but yeah it was absolutely hilarious so i wrote tammy flounder on the That's uh good laugh on, on the sheet yeah it was um, oh, what that one go for that was uh sherry morgan at 16 Yeah, so sorry about that, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> I said to Travis, I was like, she's going to be pissed, man. <laughs> oh, man. All right, guys, check it out. Got a sweet little pony blob of Cunningham and Company out of Philadelphia. 
Nice aqua, light aqua in color. Nothing on the back side of this one. 1880s, 1890s. Nice applied top. Look at this. No damage at all, just a little bit of case wear. Nice little pony blob. Look where I just put this thing. <laughs> what the world? <laughs> we are getting tired. Oh, man. Cunningham and Company out of Philadelphia, guys. Real nice pony blob right here. 1880s, 1890s. Let's go with a $20 start. $20 start on the Cunningham and Company. Pony blob. $20 start. No damage on this, guys. Really nice, light aqua. Pony blob. We got Tammy Cooch to 20. Here we go. Need 21 or higher. 1880s Cunningham and Company, Philadelphia. Twenty one or higher. There was a bunch of stuff with that. All the stuff I wrote Bobby J on. Oh, he got this too? No, no. Sure. No, that was with something else. <clears throat> a minute and thirty on the clock. Twenty one or higher. At least it was a flounder and not a dogfish. <laughs> then you would be in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea how I wrote that down, but it was hilarious. 21 or higher. Minute and 10 on the clock, guys, on the real nice light aqua pony blob out of Philadelphia, Cunningham and Company. No damage. One minute left on the clock. 21 or higher. 1880s, 1890s. We're down to 25 seconds on the clock, guys, on the Pony Blob, Cunningham and Company out of Philadelphia. $21 or higher. I got a feeling there's going to be a snipe coming. We are on lag now. Here we go. We're almost done, Adam. Just a couple more left. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Bobby J, you got that at 22, brother man. Bobby J at $22. Nice pickup on that. What was it? That pony blob. Cunningham and Company. All right, next up, we've got a scarce hutch, guys. For those of you in the room, you're about to get a sweet treat. John L. Getz and Son Bottlers out of York, Pennsylvania. This is a bigger one-quart hutch. says this bottle must be returned. And it also has an H2 on the, base, or on the back side of it, H2. Nothing on the base. You can see it's a really pretty... Ice blue, glacier blue color. Check that out, guys. John L. Getz and Son. Yeah. Now, this one is listed as scarce in the Hutch book. There's your number, PA3007. Scarce in the Hutch book. No damage. $60 start. $60 start on the John L. Getz and Son Bottlers out of York, Pennsylvania. One quart hutch. 
Really, really nice. Somebody's gonna get a killer deal on this one. Need $60 start, guys. John L. Getz and Son, bottlers out of York, Pennsylvania. Really, really nice Hutchison. One quart, no damage. Very clean. Nice watermelon slug plate. H2 on the reverse. 1890s on this one. $60 start. Let me see if I can find the marble that fits that thing. I got one more, one more shooter. I'm gonna throw in there. Yep. Oh yeah. I got one more of these uh, sapphire blue shooters, we'll call them, full of uh, seed bubbles. I'm gonna throw that right there into the hutch. $60 start, guys. No less. John L. Getz and Son, bottlers out of York, Pennsylvania. We got Gale at 60. Thank you, brother man. Clock is rolling. Here we go. Need 62 or higher. 62 or higher. One minute and 45 seconds on the clock. Clear shooter made by Jabo Company. Cool. Thanks for that, Corey Doc. That's the first time anybody told me where the uh, those clear ones come from. Jabo. Crap. What is it? Steve was just right before he came. I don't think he ran it. Yeah. You did? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. I didn't think you did. Minute and 15 seconds on the clock. John L. Getz and Son. Bottlers out of York, Pennsylvania. Says this bottle must be returned. One quart hutch with a nice Jabo shooter marble. One minute on the clock. 62 or higher. That thing dug a long time in here, too. That came out of the same pit that and what's his name's back over down the road. Remember how that pit like up underneath the wall at eight at sixty seven you normally get into. Didn't have much in it. It's been like three and a half foot deep. What's his name? Tommy? No, up from Tommy. Um Dang, what is his name? <laughs> I can't remember. I freaking worked with the guy forever. Dang, I don't know. Right now. His, his, uh, mom thought, or his grandma thought 20 we were seconds. We were burying drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thought she was like, freaking out. Yeah. Till, she, till he told her who he was, and then she wouldn't leave the window. He said she had a thing for us. <laughs> <laughs> 62 or drugs. higher, guys. We're on lag now. <whistles> yeah, I know they are, Corey. You're right. Five, four, Three, two, one, zero. Gail, you got that at sixty dollars on the bare minimum. Nice pickup on that, brother man. Heck yeah. All right, guys, next up, check it out. We've got a sweet little uh, paneled sheared lip inkwell in a nice light aqua color. No damage, around 1890s, turn of the century. British.
give you a little glow show on this one real quick. And let me find a find a marble for uh, for this guy here. So I believe we have another Jabo. I think we have another Jabo. This is a smaller one. This is a smaller one. It's got uh, you can see bubbles all throughout it. We're gonna put that right on top of there. It's a little darker color than the ink is, but it fits it nice. It looks real pretty. We're gonna go with a $8 start. $8 start on the Sheared Lip Inkwell with the Jabo, or Jabo. Is it Jabo? Jabo, my it's fault. Jabo. Jabo. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like a dab -o? Sherry Morgan's at 10. <laughs> Clock is rolling, guys. Here we go. So are we. We need $11 or higher. Do jab -o. <laughs> $11 or higher. Tammy Cooch is at 11. Gail says triple dab -o. Yeah. $12 or higher on the Sheared Lip Inkwell and the really nice Jabbo marble. Minute and 30 on the clock. I'm going to flip the light back on for you. No damage on either one of these. I know the ink is around 1890s, turn of the century. I think the marble is, what, 1920s, 1930s? Corey Doc, am I right on that? Corey Doc says 13. Thank you, brother. Need 14 or higher. 14 or higher. 50 seconds left on the clock. One more bottle after this, guys. I'm going to do something. Sherry Morgan is at 14. Thank you, sister lady. 15 or higher. 15 or higher. Marble is 40s or 50s. Oh, okay. So the Jabos are a little, little more modern. Depression era. Nice. Thank you, brother. Are all the Jabos clear, Corey Doc? Or do they have any of them with colors? We're on lag now, guys. Get your bids in. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Sherry Morgan at 14. Sherry Morgan at 14. Nice pickup on that sister lady. Yeah. The most modern, huge variety of colors. Oh, the most modern. All right, Corey, we appreciate the information, brother. Tammy, your 15, unfortunately, was out by a little over a second. But check this out, guys. The final run of the night. Look at the Benicia on this. You guys that have seen the little Facebook clip on the Wheeling, Virginia, Open Pondle Inc., Corey actually dug. This is the paneled ink or mucilage that he popped out right before that Wheeling, Virginia ink. Real nice early. Look at the patina on it, the Benicia. 1870s. Super, super early. Rolled lip. Just barely, barely rolled. You can see a little tiny crease up there. Really nice bottle. Really nice bottle. No embossing, unfortunately, but no damage either. We're going to put that up there. Check that out. We're also going to throw in a really nice light, almost cornflower blue Bromo Caffeine. Blown in mold. Check it out. Bromo Caffeine. 
This one's got a five on the base of it. So this is gonna be the final run of the night right there, guys. Two really, really nice smaller bottles. One money, no damage. How about a $15 start? $15 start. One more second, one more second before we get this rolling. We're gonna throw in, how about this real pretty half clear, half yellow, like mustard yellow. Yeah, we're gonna throw that in there, right there on that. And then we're gonna grab this one. It looks like a beach ball. Looks like a beach ball. It's got blue, it's got red, and it's got yellow. So it looks like a beach ball, nice summer colors. Not gonna fit in there, so I'm just gonna let that roll around there with them. One more, one more I'm gonna put in there. Check this one out. This is like a really, really early, or uh, light, light mint green, and it's got what looks to be gray or blue streaks in it. Really, really unique looking marble there. It's got a, you can see like a minty green kind of look to it. There it is, guys. The final run of the night right there. Three marbles, an ink that's going to be in tomorrow's video, and a nice cornflower blue bromo caffeine. Last run of the night. Clock is rolling. Sherry Morgan is at 20. Need 21 or higher. 21 or higher. Holly Lavins at 25. Thank you, sister lady. 26 or higher. 26 or higher. Last run of the night, guys, and then we're going to call it. Minute and 10 seconds on the clock. No damage on any of the bottles. No damage on any of the marbles. One minute left. 26 or higher. Hey, appreciate you, Tattoo Steve, brother man. Have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And uh, enjoy tomorrow's video as well. I guess it'll be today. I don't know if we're after midnight yet or not. Probably are. One is a Vitro Sunset and the other is a Marble King. The last one is a Slag Swirl. Pretty sure the last one has good value. Yeah, that, that uh, green is really neat. Corey Docks at 29. He said he'll gladly take them. You need $30 or higher. Almost at 1 a.m.? Nice. That's what I'm talking about. You guys have kept me going all day. I really appreciate it. Almost 50 people still in the room at 1 a.m. You rock. All of you. Bobby J's at 31. Bobby J's at 33. 5, 4, 3, Two, one, zero. Bobby J, you got that at 33, brother man. Bobby J at 33 on the final combo of the night. And what a great one, too. That bottle right there is really nice. Really nice. The Bromo Caffeine, really nice. A lot harder to find Bromo. And then the Slag. The slag that you got it. A steal. That's right. A steal. Killed it. Nice pickup on that, brother, man. 33 for Bobby J. Let me write down the final, final score here. All right, guys. Hey, that is it for tonight. <laughs> me and Corey are... Feeling like we've been in a daggum sauna for the last six hours. <laughs> really appreciate each and every one of you. We had a blast. We got rid of some really nice bottles. 
Hope you all had as much fun as we did. And uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Enjoy your weekend. We're out of here. See you later. Watch for the uh, new video tomorrow.